the generic focus tree, the most standard of focus trees, the most basic of focus trees, but surprisingly the most OP of focus trees. The new expansion for the Trial of Allegiance features Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. But what about Peru, the generic focus tree king? And I say this because Peru was really OP. It started off with Cass research at the start of the game. You also start as fascist, so you can justify practically on day one. You don't long have the planes anymore, but you've got fascism. And you also have a new ability with the new expansion to form a Peru-Bolivian confederation, which is letting you cause on all of Bolivia and a bunch of other states around uh, South America, which is kind of really fun, right? And you can also form the, the Bolivar's dream by unifying all the North as well. And there's also like an Ecuador-Peru border dispute thing that they've added as well. Let's check out every single click where I play as Peru. Every single click is where I show 99% of the clicks. And I will try my best to not overly explain things. Because in the past, I know some of you guys are probably a little bit more advanced than newbie level. But if there are mechanics that I feel are new and fresh, I've not really gone into, I'll give a little bit more of in-depth info on that. But I'm playing as Peru and check out this focus tree. Wowee. So I said before, some parts of it are weak and some parts of it strong. The industry side is kind of weak. However, stuff like secret weapons giving you times four electronics boost, that's pretty strong. And also you've got the option to gain 5% recruitable for free and then a further 2%. So 7% recruitable in total. So an insane amount of manpower for free, potentially that you could stack with, let's say, human wave for an additional 5%. Or, I don't know, desperate defense for an additional 5%. So the amount of actual recruitable pop could be astronomically insane. Maybe that's what we'll go for. Maybe we won't. I'm not quite in my mind up yet, but we'll see. Peru is a thing. What have we got going on? Oil's pretty good. Tungsten's pretty good. However, there are no naval dot yards, so we can't exercise our fleet to gain unlimited XP. Because there's no way of repairing them and they get damaged when they're exercising, which is an issue. Anyway, let's start from the top. You know how it works. Research is first. Let's do this. So we're going to go for basic machine tools. Actually, do we? Yeah, I think we do basic machine tools. And then to top that off, we're also going to go for a little bit of artillery. Yeah. Okay, we're going to assign more mills to our basic equipment. And then we'll queue up some mills here and here. Yeah. If you're wondering, I hop between these menus really quickly. And you're like, how am I doing this? Is this like some kind of telepathic thing? But it's just at the top of the keyboard. It's Q W E R T Y U I O P. You know, I never realized it went all the way to the end because that's quite a reach. My palm is always resting around the control on the left side, so my my thumb hits space, and then my left little little finger is always hitting control. That's the reason why you see me think do things at lightning speed in Hoi. It's because I kind of memorize the hotkeys. I'll be honest with you. I have to think about the hotkeys when I say to myself, "Oh, what's construction?" I think it's T. Yeah, it's T. I had to think about that, you know, because it's muscle memory for me. I've done it for so long. Anyway, there we go. Um, national focus. We are going to go for mills. 70 day focus for one mill. I know, devastating, right? But it is what it is. Generic focus tree time. Shift left click. We're going to sign all the boyos. And I think what we're going to do is convert them to the infantry. If you hop into your recruit and deploy, you can actually see what they consist of. Yeah, and the infantry is the one what we want. Uh, right, so where do we want the guys to settle? I think we're going to have them on the front line of you. I think what I'm going to do is something a bit unconventional. We're actually going to make a four-bat line. No, actually, no, no, we're not. We're going to make a front line between here and here, and then X for the offensive order. So you press F4, which is supply map mode, and you can see this is a, a supply region that's crucial. So is this. I suppose this is somewhat relevant because it controls this region in that case maybe i don't want to build mills here maybe i want to build them here yeah that makes sense all right and we're going to import a little bit of steel because right now resources are crucially important because we need to make sure we're producing lots of guns i'm also going to sign a myo to gain xp which we'll talk more about as we press in the game i think what i'm going to do instead of like over explaining mechanics i think i'm going to play the game and then i'll let the game kind of tell itself out and then you can go from there if there are any th game mechanics that you feel like I'm really not touched upon and I'm not really explained very thoroughly, please in the comments just shout really loud. Just say, Dave, I don't understand this mechanic. Can you give me more of a breakdown of it? In the next video I'll make, I might give a bit more of a breakdown. Gonna shift left click, exercise our uh, Air Force. Just we've got a few fighters, a few casts. That's kind of cute. What nationality are they? Oh, British. Fairy Gordon. And also uh, CR Theta 2. I think that's Italian. I think. We also have a fleet, so I'm gonna. Select it all and G and merge it up. So the F keys is F1 is Army, F2 is Air Force, and F3 is Navy. And you see me hit, jumping between these really quickly. And once again, I'm using my left hand to move around the keyboard. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. Before I found the miracle and I found my Lord and Savior, which is hotkeys, 
I used to manually move my mouse everywhere like a noob. But when I discovered the power of hotkeys, my life changed forever. And trust me, this is all you need to do, okay? So just remember, F1, F2, and F3 are your map modes for Air Force, Navy, and Army. And just naturally, if you want to change between them, just press the buttons, okay? And just do it a few times. And before you know it, three or four times after doing it, okay, the first two times are going to be painful. The third time, when you do it, it's going to feel so good. And you're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to do that every single time now. And then you'll not have to move your mouse, and it'll feel so good. Anyway, we're going to go for the first mill. Because we desperately need mills. Desperately need mills. Oh my god, so desperate. Oh yeah, let's talk about the mechanics actually. So uh, here we go. Uh, we can revive the Confederation. So if you play Vic 3, you probably already know this, but there was a very brief period where Peru and Bolivia formed a unified nation. Uh, it didn't last very long though. I think it lasted only about 10 years and then they uh, went separate ways. And they tried to form a unifi unified nation, uh, but unfortunately they had uh, political differences. I actually don't know the real reason. Someone comment below and let me know why it happened. Also, there is a war that happens here between Ecuador and Peru because they have a boundary dispute over this part of the, the jungles of the Amazon. So you can move here and declare war on Ecuador, but you need world tension to be high enough or you need the United States to be at war. So you need 35% world tension and it uses command power and you instantly declare war on Ecuador. So it's a nice free war, I guess. I don't know what these ones do. So this one allows you to gain war support and stability and political power and this one loses it interesting i think you can only select this one whilst you're actually at war with ecuador heads up these notifications i've turned them off you basically uh news pop-ups and i get too many of them click them away a billion times it's just a waste of my clicks listen my clicks are important one day i'm going to be dead all right and i want to know that i spent my life not clicking on things i don't need to click on all right that's all i'm going to say all right where do we go from here? I think we need radio. Radio affects reinforce rate and it will make a big impact in early wars. Okay, we don't have any generals. That's right, because that's the thing for Peru. So we're going to hire a general. For some reason, you can't select from here. I don't know why. You have to click out of it and then click back into it. It's just like an old bug that's been around since donkey's years. Accept it. It's the way it is. Disperse industry one. Uh, and then that gives us more factory output and building slots. Same old. Next up, uh, industry effort two, because we want more mills. So what we're going to do now is now we're producing two mills. We're going to start assigning into artillery and pop that there. So what I just did there is I held shift click and left click on it. And it was assigned to the very top. And then automatically new mills will be assigned to it. Okay, I'm going to press uh, the teal key here and turn weather off. And I'm also going to go debug underscore smooth. Now, if you've got a very decent PC like I have, debug smooth is going to be awesome. It's going to give you extra speed. And it may result in a little bit of jutter late game. Not massive, just a small amount. However, if you've got a kind of an old shitty PC, this is probably not going to work for you. Maybe you'll notice some game, performance games at the very start, but mid game, you'll be like, oh, what the hell's going on here? It's like juttery mess. Uh, and then weather is just one of those things as well that I've just noticed from playing the game a lot. If you do turn the weather off, you do find that the game runs a little bit smoother. Once again, it's not going to make a big difference in this game, but if you're using a lot of Air Force, a lot of Navy, turning the weather off will give you a bit of a bonus because weather can affect those two certain things quite massively. And once again, it's just certain things that I do to speed the game up. I thought it'd be nice to show you guys just for once. Uh, I don't usually do it every single game. Usually, if it's a game where I'm very Air Force, Navy orientated, I usually leave weather on because I feel like I'm giving myself a bit of a boost by turning it off. But overall, uh, that's just a nice way you can get a little bit extra performance. Give it a go. It might not work for you. I'll be honest with you, Debug Smooth is a bit of a controversial one. The devs have noted that it, it isn't for everyone. That's why it's not one of the standard settings in the game. Woo, here we are. All right, so I'm going to go for Army Offense. And the reason we go for that one early on is because it gives ticking army XP. And army XP allows us to modify our templates. And we're going to add our artillery on when we get the first possible opportunity. I think what I'm going to do is start exercising my army. And potentially maybe another three divisions. So what I'm going to do here is just do a bunch of things I did really quickly. So one, I trained four divisions. I'm going to say that when it's trade one, this will automatically close off. I will also say that equipment will go to this division last. We'll go to our primary divisions first and this one last. And also when divisions are ready and deployed, they will deploy into this specific region by assigning it. I just did it really quickly. You probably noticed me do it a billion times. But this time around, I actually showed you and I was very kind to you. Thank me. All right. So production is going pretty well now. Everything's going pretty sweetly. That's good. Uh, as I said, I went for radio because reinforce rate early game is big. Also, Disperse 2 is big because it gives actual raw industrial output. So that's the reason why I went for that one early. Artillery is massive because it gives soft attack bonuses, which is also pretty massive as well. Armor um, uh, Effort 3 is done. Okay. So I've asked myself the question, do I want manpower, which is this path? Do I want civvies, which gives just raw industry? Do I want to train my navy? Yeah, we'll do that one. One of the little tricks you can do in Hoi 4 is because if you've got a decent amount of oil at the start of the game is you can exercise your fleet and you can exercise it indefinitely because you have an unlimited amount of fuel, which is bloody awesome. 
the only downside to it is that your fleet is going to get damaged from exercising. It just naturally happens as things fire off. Uh, guns naturally wear out, you know. But we've got no naval dot yards, so they'll eventually sink. They will sink completely if you uh, leave them out here forever and ever and ever. So what I'm doing is naval dot yards for the effort, and then eventually they'll automatically repair off. All right, a bunch of new divisions that are deployed here. I'm going to sign those to the front line. And you can also, what you can do is click on this icon and, and click on an actual front line. And when they're ready to deploy, they will automatically go to that front line, just saving you an extra click. Oh my goodness, so many clicks have been saved today. So you can see these these ships have been damaged, but if I were to repair them and send them back, they can never be repaired. It's a weird oversight by the devs, I think. I think you should always have a minimum of one naval dot yard in all circumstances. It seems really bizarre to me that you can have a minimum amount of naval dot yards where you can never repair your fleet. How do you have the fleet to begin with if you're unable to maintain it? Huh? How does that work? Anyway, we are repairing now, and we also are... Uh, repairing our fleet but remember assign the actual repair queue assign them assign them because otherwise they'll never repair and then we'll make uh combos off the back of that is that a good idea yeah we've only got four so that's probably a good idea right where do we want to go from here i think we're going to go for the silent workhorse to stack political p power a little bit higher a uh, second alternative would be go for war economy which we will focus on very shortly all right i think it might be time to add artillery on I don't want to do that at the very last minute. Okay, let's start justifying on Bolivia. 240 days? It's massive. Yeah, we're in a good position now. We're producing a decent amount of artillery. The biggest mistake you can make is rushing to this war into Bolivia. Uh, because if you do, you're going to find yourself with divisions that aren't very strong. And it's going to cause a lot of problems. The easiest part to bust into is actually this desert province here. You've got jungles to the north. You've got mountains to the middle. It's kind of a hard nation to break. South America is a nightmare for some of the nations. Because the, their capital cities are in... Um, mountains which just makes things a nightmare so we've got enough points now in artillery to improve it the easy thing you want to do early on is put points into these two which is production efficiency oh let's click away i'll click on it again uh that one gives extra soft attack which is good this one gives extra uh production again breakthrough is always good reliability soft attack soft attack soft attack and then a make anti-air better a holding shift just cues them up it just saves you having to do the clicks and therefore don't have to go back to it saves yourself a bit of time we're saving yourself time that's the objective anyway we're going to train three more boyos once again the same strat as before cue them up send them up send them on their way we're going to go for the extra industrial effort everything's going pretty well right now we're a little bit low on steel right now so if you hover over this we're having a five percent penalty for steel be aware it's not only the five percent penalty it's also a penalty to how much production efficiency cap you gain over time you can see this minus five percent over production efficiency cap um which results in overall more overall factory output so just give an fyi let you guys know overall it can hurt you so that's the reason why i would really recommend you take care of that right about now i think we're gonna probably not train five more but only four more that would probably make more sense construction is done actually no we need raw soft attack so i'm gonna go for the support weapons the beauty of those bonuses is they give raw soft attack and breakthrough and defense um without needing to do any necessary upgrades anyway we're now the artillery on now which gives us a juicy boost of 17 extra soft attack based upon if i had a battalion on i think that's what i want to do actually because this is going to give us more soft attack However, the production cost for this one is significantly less. You know what? I'm going big. I'm going big. Artillery is. And we exercise them again. And because they're already level 3, it doesn't take them long to get to level 3 again. Right now, I've just realized we have no trains. And we have no actual trains research. That's the reason why I considered. Did you see that at the very start of the game? I hovered over trains. And I thought to myself, do I actually need trains? So when you get to a certain amount of, of supply usage, you eventually... Uh, get a train requirement before you don't have trains trains are a magical thing that no one talks about but then you go over a certain supply limit and then you need trains and this is why in this circumstance i need to focus on trains war economy and all of a sudden we can now produce mills at an amazing rate i'm just going to queue them up by the way i always hit shift to, to build the maximum amount it just saves three clicks i guess one click because i'll be hitting clicking shift which is okay whatever anyway next one infrastructure the reason we work down this path is you gain the extra research slots, which is the, the most crucial thing you want to do. All right, we've got command power now. So what I'm going to do is hire a field marshal. So we'll go for this guy. He is generic. Then I have to promote him, make him a field marshal. Then I'm going to go for our offensive doctor, give him plus one attack. You right click on Bolivia, then click on justify. You can see 57% towards justification is complete. I'll exercise you up to level three. These boils are almost done. And we're keeping an eye on our production right now and everything's going pretty swell i think I've, what i might do is actually add an extra battalion on this gives extra hp organization and it's just a slightly better balance of your production uh that's all pretty good i think for now yep we're gonna go for back to the support equipment 
And once again, we want to focus on making the trains, and that's something we're focused on heavily right now. And also, top it off, we're going to start making trucks as well. I'm going to move those away from artillery. Trucks are important because they give extra supply from supply depots, and supply in South America is absolutely terrible, so it's something you want to focus on quite early on. All right, more infrastructure. More, more, more. Exercise level 3 is important because you get that 25% extra attack modifier, and that is very, very, very big. Makes a big difference those early combats. And usually when you focus in on two nations that have pretty equal sized armies and you're fighting in difficult terrain, having those little extra advantages is just going to be absolutely huge. So if you want extra stability, Ideological Crusade is a good one. It gives you plus 10 stability overall, depending on how much political support you got for your primary party, which is fascist. In this case, you're only going to get five stability. Yeah, I got exactly five. But if I gain more party po popularity, party popularity, so many Ps, uh, you result in more overall stability. And what I'm also going to do here, oh, trains are finished. We can hit this button that gives free trains. And we can also assign, if you hold shift left click, you can assign the extra train on the top. Oh my goodness, so many mills. And there you go. We're going to be gently making more trains over time. And now our supply situation is a lot, lot better. Then we're going to start making some guns, continue on from there. But justification is complete. Uh, we'll just wait a little bit longer to train these boyos. Three, two, one. I think what I might do is select one division on assign him from the front line which is this one and i'm gonna press b and right click to assign him and move to this front line so what's going to happen is they're going to creep into this part of the amazon here while i'm going to make my offensive through the south here and that's kind of how i'm going to counteract him all right air superiority and close air support assign that onto the general by right clicking i put you guys on offensive order and put them on aggressive too because i want everyone to attack initially and I'm also going to go for the research slot. Right click, and we're going to declare war on Bolivia. All right, off we go. We go. And we're attacking initially, pushing into the desert here, and absolutely obliterating them. And in the mountains, for the most part, things are going quite well. All you need to do is secure their three victory points. This one, this one, and I think maybe this one. You might not even need the top one, actually. And then you're good to go. All right, going five speed now. I'm so confident. I'm going to five speed it up. This is a little bit ahead of time, but I need the bonuses, so we're going to go for that. We've got a bonus here for our Mayo trait, so we're going to go for the soft attack, queue these up, soft attack, extra production, soft attack, soft attack, breakthrough, and extra soft attack, soft attack. I love soft attack, right? Okay, we're looking on the production for iron, and we're 2.5% behind. That's not a big deal. I like that. We're also going to go for improved working conditions, and when we've got the option, we're going to do war bonds too, which reduces consumer goods by quite a hefty chunk boom and now we should have a, a decent amount of industry now yeah we do so you can see here they're creeping in the north but they're dedicating divisions to a region there's no actual fighting happening which is very advantageous to me and you can see we are making gains even though it is a little bit slow and then we're going broke through into that capital region here um do we try and take that capital here i want to try and focus fire them see if we can this is primary the most difficult thing to take in bolivia due to the fact that it's a mountain capital and i hate mountain capitals Ooh. Surely, if it's a capital city, it has some good infrastructure, right? So in that circumstance, surely it'd be easy to break a capital, wouldn't it? No? Okay, this one gives two civilian factories. Oh, Paradox, you are spoiling us, sir. So I'm selecting divisions here and pressing H to hold their attack. I'm just focusing on the attacks that can I can actually win. And as you can see, I'm just trying to make little pushes, little gains, and little uh, strategic wins. And then uh, we can make gains in the long run to actually secure our goals. All right. We're in a good spot here. So what I'm going to do is put on motorized priority two. And we just have enough trucks for that. Uh, that's debatable. And this one isn't connected. But if we connect this one here, I'm going to do control right click, meaning they're not going to move. So I'm not going to lose my place here. But if we connect this railway, we connect to this supply depot. So therefore, supply is going to come into this region a lot easier. And to be fair, at this point, we've technically won. And that's a win. All right. I think we're going to attack now from this position. I think what we're going to do is narrow the front line by control right clicking. Um, everyone's going to be assigned to this front line apart from one dude, which I'll keep here. So these guys are kind of floating here and everyone else moves to the front line. Yep. Three, two, one. Off you go. Also, we're having issues with the resistance. So what I'm going to do with the resistance is turn it off. That'll make more sense later on. You'll see. Okay. Focus on soft attack improvements. We're also going to focus on artillery improvements a little bit ahead of time, but you'll make sense when, when I start going for it later on we're also going to go for the more advanced equipment for the guns to check how much steel we're behind for 15 percent. that's quite high so we're going to get a bit more steel from america also we're getting a lot of naval xp now so what i'm going to do is go for this officer core doctrine that gives more naval xp and we're pushing in right now and doing some hefty fine damage all right is it time to go for political power i think it is yeah so political effort 
and eventually these two focuses will give us a total of 7% extra recruitable. We are actually on volunteer only, by the way, so it's not even like we're even pushing our armed forces to its maximum capabilities. We have got lots of flexibility. So as you can see now, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six divisions uh, designated in the north. And you'd think that's not a lot. However, what's happened here now is I am fighting significantly smaller army of Bolivia. And as you can see, I'm microing the troops around because the front line now has become really narrow. And I think I might be able to cap them. Yeah, I can. We can actually cap them. Actually, we're going to justify on Chile at the same time. We've got a claim on it. It's 110 days, so we'll do that one now. We've gained a bunch of equipment free from Italy because we're fascists. Isn't that great, eh? Mussolini, what a lad. We're going to make sure we get a nice encirclement around them. And there we go. We've capped them. Completely annexed the nation. Bolivia's been annexed. But that's not all. We're getting resistance, right? Resistance is bad. But get this. Resistance isn't a big deal if you've got cause. So revive the confederation. Wow. So not only does this give you cause, so you don't need to worry about the resistance. It also gives you a core on this state, this state, this state, and also a bunch of Brazil as well. It puts you in a really, really good spot. Now world tension spiked because I've generated world tension. We might be able to go for this one. Oh, no, it has to be at 35%. It's at 34%. So we're actually pretty close, though. I'm going to go for Chile, though. I'm still going to go for Chile because Chile's got lots of steel. And my industry sucks right now. We need to get some steel in. All right, industry. We're going to go on construction. It's a little bit late. I don't usually do construction in 1938. That's unusual for me. What we're also going to do is align you boils up here and make sure that we push into the south here and encircle them in the north. That's the plan. It's the classic trick you used to do to Chile. Is it still effective? Well, we're about to find out. And we're going to train a bunch of more divisions. How many can we get? I realize we've got no manpower, so I need to wait for either limited conscription or militarism and military youth. We'll go from there. Anyway, five speed it up. Let's go. All right, time for more artillery and also time for some more infantry. Uh, 18 width. Yeah, this is the 7-2. This is like a classic division that everyone used to go for in the olden days. And you know what? Stop it off as well. I'm really big on artillery, so let's just do big artillery. I do realize right now my divisions are all clumped together, and this is a bad spot for them to be in. If we check how long until the justification, we're about halfway. And I think I'm okay with that for now. All right, let's focus more on... I actually don't know what I want to focus on. We'll go support equipment because we're going to go for rangers eventually. And rangers are really good for mountainous regions. Could probably start focusing on them now, actually. Yeah, we desperately need extensive conscription. So let's do that now. And now we're going to slowly mobilize over time. So 1.5% is what you start for volunteer only. But you're going to mobilize now up to 5%, I believe. Yeah. And you can see it's slowly ticking up. So it's 1.61, 1.62, 1.63. 1 and eventually mobilizing more and more and more as time goes on. Import a bit more steel from America. Adjust my production just ever so slightly. Exercise my boyos to level three. What we did here is an area defense order just to make them spread out. Because if they're all stacked in one region, they're going to get lots of attrition. So if they're spread out, they're not going to have as much of those problems. All right, the justification is complete. I'm going to continue towards um, nationalism focus. You guys are in a good position. They've exercised up mostly. Get them to the front. Get them a little bit of organization. I think what we'll do is do the same thing we did before we'll have one guy who sits here and then another guy who sits here i'm railroading to the front line just let them dig in and then we'll once again we'll attack once again and just hopefully split them down the middle that's the plan don't forget civilian factories that are not assigned aren't gaining you anything so just queue up all those mills one chili no more now it's tempting at this point to manually attack I'm going to recommend not doing that. Let the AI take care of it for now. It is being a little bit silly, though, because it's focusing on this attack on just one province here. I kind of want you guys to split up a little bit, because I think we're right now we're in a position where we can so desperately win. Oh, hang on. Naval invasion attempt in Lima. Ooh. Okay. What I'm going to do is put you guys on strike force here and here. And that might be just a tiny little bit of naval supremacy to deny them from doing a naval invasion. I don't think they will do that. Hey, if they do, that would be a big surprise by the AI. That would be a big moment of like, wow, AI thinking one step ahead, right? All right, we're going to go for disperse industry ahead of time. It'll make more sense later on because once again, South America has a big issue with infrastructure and um, running out of building slots and resources is a big problem. Oh, you very cheeky. You are very cheeky. Yeah, they did actually do a naval invasion. That's very cheeky. Okay, all right. What we're going to do is this. This is a kind of a quick fire moment. We're going to go for professional officer course because it saves us 5% on doctrine costs. And then we're going to go for mass assault. And mass assault is useful because it lets us to train divisions only at 10%. So they're creeping towards us right now. Oh, I don't think we're going to have enough time. Oh, they are so smart. This is actually kind of fun. I like this. It's a base race. I feel like I'm playing StarCraft. All right, we're in a position now. We can deploy you. Five divisions. 
pop you here. Uh, actually, we'll just do it under this army. So press C for a fallback line. Spread you guys out. And it's just basically have a little barrier preventing him from moving forward. That's good. And then there's a little encirclement that happened here. And then there's another one happening in the north as well. And then we should be able to close all of this and it should be straightforward. It is a little bit difficult though because there's mountains around these regions. So it can be quite difficult. So be aware that you can get stuck in here if you're not careful. When you're training your divisions, we want to focus on mountaineers because we're going to go for rangers, which is like a support company that gives um, a big bonus um, to uh, fighting in mountains. All right, infantry expert for the attack. Very useful. Can we make him a officer corps infantry guy? No, but we do already have an infantry guy. I just forgot to assign him. And also, we've got an option for this guy, but we're not going to assign his trait slot yet. Yet. All right, this pocket's been encircled and pushed back. And we're going to close this one in the north as well. Yep, we're in a good position. Oh, they're pushing us in the north. Be careful to micro here so to make sure they don't push us through. And I think for the most part, we're going to hold them. And they're pushing in the center here. No, they're not going to break. That's fine. That's fine. It's really cool when you have to think on your feet, though, isn't it? You know, like constantly, like, think to yourself, oh, how do I deal with this situation where the naval invaded me? I suppose if you wanted to think one step ahead here, what you could do is put them on strike force and then the naval invasion would never happen because our navy is relatively large enough that it won't even cause a problem. Anyway, front line here, build planning bonus. Get on the front line, control B, and staff, off, staff office plan. And that is going to give us loads of planning bonus. We're intercepting our convoys. We don't even have that many convoys. But what you can do to get around this is our convoys have been intercepted from here and here. The way you get around this is you build a railway from here to the capital. That's right. In the game, there are some areas of the world that don't actually have uh, railways all the way connected. And because of that, you're able to get convoy raided. It's one of the issues that happens in the lowlands quite often. Anyway, are we pushing? Are we pushing? Are we going into this? Look, this is so dumb by the AI. Look, you attack into the mountains, difficult to break. A 50% attack penalty. Attack into... Uh, deserts no penalty but the ai decides that the, the actual mountains is the one you want to go for oh and italy's giving us more guns god it, it pays dividends to be fascist doesn't it uh, military youth and here we go this is where we're going to gain a ridiculous amount of manpower all right keep going keep pushing pushing down santiago is where we're going and you're broken just keep pushing southwards eventually what's happened they can't rebuild their entrenchment and eventually you just end up breaking them over and over and over again just keep pushing, keep going, and eventually you'll break through. And there we go, did it. Did it. And then here as well. Nice. GG. And of course, to go... Oh, I realize we've already got an infantry guy, so it doesn't even matter. Maybe an army recovery guy? Yeah, why not? Gives more org, refresh rate. And Santiago should be the final nail in the coffin. No, I can't believe it. They're still going. Chile, strong. Chile with a focus tree. They're like, I can just keep going. I can just keep going. And there we go. Pop. On top that off as well, we're going to steal their fleet as well. My navy now, yoink. Convert all the horses to infantry. We're going to put everyone on the border of Ecuador. Off they go. And we're going to move to secure this one, which basically gives us a free war against the Ecuadorians because of this boundary dispute. So there was a war in 1940, I believe, between these two states. And this is what we're basically uh, recreating. Oh, this is so unlucky. We've just captured a region that has an earthquake. And if we designate some some of our manpower and lose some stability, we can put relief efforts in. I can't, that is so big by the Paradox devs. That is huge. Paradox devs have thought who occupies this region when the earthquake happens. That is so huge. Hey, come on. Credit where credit's due, eh? Anyway, Navy. Merge it up. Big Navy. Exercise the Navy. Now we have a massive Navy. Look, we've got capital ships this time around. Okay, it's tempted to push further northwards, but I think at this point... It is actually better to push into Argentina. So I'm actually still going to start justifying on, on the Argentinians. And we're also going to train as many of these boys as we can. We're really far behind on artillery, but we're actually doing pretty good on guns, though. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I think what's happening is we gain a lot of guns from capitulating nations. And I think that's why in that circumstance, we're ended up having a lot of guns, but not so many artillery. Anyway, boom, declare war. And we are at war. The best thing to do is usually slide around the north. Is this still possible? Yeah, it is. It is. Put them on aggressive, attack immediately. Ecuadorian's army is not very good. Uh, initially, just push in from every angle and you absolutely demolish them. Oh, this is it. it Enforce their demands. Right. So instead of capitulating the entirety of Ecuador, I can gain some war support and stability and political power. Oh, do I accept it? Do I do it? Just for the memes. Here's a question. Oh, here's a question. What if I take their capital, I press the button. <laughs> We take that. Boom. Pause. There are 86%. So we have to take this final city. I'm going to grab my army and shift and right click here. 
Oh, don't go through there. Go through the easy bit. And then they're pushing in. Okay, now they're at hundred percent. Yeah. Then we press the button. <laughs> I've caps them. And I also get this. <laughs> it removes the Amazon wall, which grants recoverable pop division attack on core territory. Hang on, what? Oh, so this only fires because I was doing the certain event that it required of. This is actually kind of cool in a way. I like this because it's like a specifically regional war that none of the factions can join. That's actually kind of cool. Not that it even works anymore now because I've annexed them completely. <laughs> All right, local police force. We're going to assign horses onto that. We'll put that onto medium. Yep. And then we have to focus on Argentina now. <sighs> Argentina, I'm not going to lie, is going to be a pain in the ass in this case i'm rushing a little bit and the reason why i'm rushing is i know that brazil joins the war in the like 1940 so i've only got like one year before that actually happens so what i'm doing is deploying as many boyos as i can taking out argentina and brazil so i don't have to deal with them later on oh look we got twins exercise you justification 54 percent low on guns we're low on steel import the steel same old housework stuff boys construction's important we're gonna go for the soft attack bonuses one and then then two just to have the edge in combat we've got loads of extra mills so i'm just gonna queue more of those up we have so much naval xp even though we're not using it what we can do is add the rangers on now so we have to go into officer core special forces and go rangers i believe this is the one you want and this one now what we've got the ability to do is add the rangers on and you can see rangers here at the very bottom gives forest movement speed attack speed hills attack mountains attack mountains defense it's all the stuff we're taking advantage of basically uh, but now we need to make support equipment only a little bit though for now uh and then we start queuing up all of these as well making all the mills once again loads of mills early game because you're gaining lots of factories from conquest anyway so it's not even a big deal um nine more of these are we still recruiting manpower we are so that's amount still ticking up we're basically as you can see here five percent militarism two percent military youth five percent extensive conscription but we're only at 4.73 percent so maximum is 12 percent but we're not even halfway yet so it's okay you're gonna get more manpower over time anyway so don't worry about it it's all good it's all good all right what's the next thing research slot you can only go for this after you've got 50 factories now we've got 52 so hey can't argue with that right Brazilian good neighbor, good relationships with Brazil. That's nice, right? Uh, not so much. Doesn't apply in these circumstances, put it that way. Deploy you boys, more divisions for the win. Pop them onto the front line. Stop exercising for now. See what we might do just for a temporary period is remove one battalion of artillery. And that sorts out the artillery problem. Good. One. Argentina. Oh, their independence is guaranteed by the United Kingdom. What? Does that even apply because of the Monroe Doctrine? What? I've never seen that before. That's actually something new. Now I'm at war with the UK. Well, isn't that an interesting twist? Huh? Isn't that an interesting twist? The UK defending Argentina. Well, it's never happened before, but it has now. Boom, off we go. In the test run, that did not happen. Incoming disaster save, boys. War industrialist is for the factories. What we're going to do now with this fleet is put them on strike force in this region just to deny any possibility of a naval invasion. I think the odds of it are quite low, but I just want to make sure we repair the fleet and then we're going to push in. Meanwhile, World War II is not happening, but the UK is at war with me. Oh, and France is at war with me. It's interesting how this is going to change how the world affairs are going to work. Okay, what you want to do here is you want to push towards the victory points as well as the supply depots. So there's one in the north here. This is super crucial. Then there's one in the south here. So we're going to queue to go for that one. I'm going to shift and right click. And those are the most crucial ones early on because that, that way we get a nice supply to our front line. And also we're going to make sure that the railways are all connected. And right now, as you can see here, we, we're supplying by the ocean. And I wonder if that's because the supply is going to be more optimal. But the problem is, is our convoys are getting intercepted by the Brits and the French. Hmm. And anyway, I'm gonna put everyone aggressive now because it's time to attack. And off we go. They're our last standing, but that will cost them a lot of equipment because we've got way better divisions than them. Last stand does, is a delaying tactic and I don't think it's that effective unless you have like an equal army. Equal size armies kind of works, but if you've got like a an army that's not equal in firepower, you end up taking a lot of losses. I remember watching an old multiplayer game and I remember someone last standing on LLA main with their tank divisions and they just lost like thousands of them. The division was completely obliterated. 
All right, let's go in very smoothly. A lot of a bit lost in the south, but I wasn't defending the full front line. Don't cover the full front line of Chile because it's too long. Chile is a long boy and it will cause problems actually defending that front. The problem is, is if your front line is so long, you can't like have enough firepower in one region to do like a, a piercer attack. Should we join the Axis? Yeah, why not? Why not? The Germany's at war with Poland now. There we go. We're inadvertently helping the war effort for the Axis at the other side of the world. All right, we're going to have more issues as time goes on with infantry equipment. That's the reason why I'm focused on it now by going for uh, the garrisons, by fixing them, by putting infantry equipment into them. So I'm trying to say like a million things in one go. And it's just not falling off the tongue as quick as I would like. Make sure we're on motorized priority. Yeah, we already were. We already were. Okay, is Brazil and the Allies? No, no. So look, a lot of these front lines aren't connected. So I'm going to have to build the railways to make sure I've got the front lines and the railways connected from our end and not the uh, Argentine side. As I mentioned to you, this is not going as smoothly as my, my test run, but that's cool. We're going to... That's one of the beautiful things about Hoi 4 in a way. You get to think on your feet and see how well you can deal with a situation that you weren't necessarily prepared for. That's kind of fun. Part of the fun, right? Is it? Is it? Taking the capitals is a bit of a struggle because of the urban and there's a fort there too. But I imagine to push through the southwards here because it's mostly plains. Taking some relative losses. It's not great, but it is what it is. Sounds doing better now. The other... Twin can go for infantry expert, giving 10% attack, so that's definitely worthwhile. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to rub my crystal ball right now and see what the future is going to be like. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to entail some air power. So I'm going to basically predict it before it even happens. I'm just going to look into my big crystal ball and see if I can predict it before it actually kicks off. It's going to be difficult, though, because I'm going to need access to aluminium. And the problem is, I'm going to have no access to aluminium due to the fact that I can't get supplies from the allies, which is going to be a long-term problem. Once again, we'll have to think on our feet and see what we can do. Full encirclement on the capital. And once again, slowly breaking them down. It looks like we're not winning in some parts, but remember, they can't run anywhere. And every time they get encircled, they lose a division, so their firepower drops considerably. So don't worry about that too much. All part of the plan. There must be some new mechanics in game that gives Argentina uh, a guarantee in South America. I know you guys say that's probably normal gameplay, but it is, I can guarantee you it's actually not um usually the europeans stay out of the americas and every game i've played so far they have done that's why it was a bit of a surprise to me you don't have to trust me guys in my test runs this never happened and i did two test runs so trust me anyway where are we we're in a position now where the big daddy is brazil and when brazil joins the war it's going to cause a lot of problems for us brazil is a nightmare because of the amazon and you can see these little corridors here in the Amazon are very painful and hard to deal with. The biggest issue we're going to run into right now is keeping up with our gun production. I think one of the issues we're going to run into is we're going to be giving too much equipment to our garrisons. What I'm actually tempted to do is release Ecuador, the great Galapagos state. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, the liberal ethos. Oh, liberal fascism. Oh, liberal fascism. That's nice. They would think that those uh, ideologies would be opposed, wouldn't you? And then we can request garrison support. And that gains us 50k manpower. Uh, let's not even know what we need, though. It's the guns that we actually need, isn't it? Once again, unorthodox tactics here. But I'm going to remove a battalion of infantry. And I'm also going to move you guys to this region. Control B. Exercise to level 3. And think about what I'm going to go from here. Oh, Ecuador wants to send us some support equipment. That's nice of them. There's an option here to upgrade this artillery by doing the myo improvement and it's soft attack so soft attack for artillery is a big deal so i definitely would recommend that also the infantry equipment for the guns which is defense and yeah, that's okay not as useful but it's okay need a bit of aluminium that's a biggie there oh we can trade with america though because they've not joined the allies yet ah i'm curious to see how this is going to impact the european war the fact that i was kind of the first shot to fire <laughs> i'm curious to see how it's going to go down all right, I think I need lots and lots of horse. I'm going to need at least 24 horses. Oh, I hate to do this. This is just such a waste of time. Uh, but I have to do it. I have to do it. Yeah, I'm going to have to do it. It is what it is. I think we're going to poach Uruguay. And I think I'm going to ignore Paraguay because it actually serves as a buffer between me and Brazil. Okay, we need to focus on planes now. And there's a lot of research for planes needed. You need the chassis, you need the machine guns, you need the engines. You need the armor, you need the bigger machine guns, you need the range improvements. <laughs> There's so many upgrades you need. When you want to make your navy for the first time and you're a minor power, it's like so much upgrades you need. I suppose what I could do is I could do 
technology sharing because I'm in the access. So we'd go from 165 days for the aircraft tech. 165 to 116. So that is actually worth my time. So what that does is it's a collaboration with all the members of the Axis. And if, if everyone in the Axis has that technology, you gain a research bonus. And you can see, look, Germany, Slovakia, Italy, Romania, Norway, and Ecuador all have this research. So I gain a 50% bonus. And the 50% bonus is the biggest one you can get. And you can see, look at all these ones, big bonus, 40% bonus. This is something I just forget about. This just falls out of my head. But this is actually such a girthy bonus. Press one in the chat for girth, I suppose. All right, exercise that boyo, and then Uruguay is on the agenda. Uruguay has joined the Allies, as predicted. It has been foretold. Uruguay is insanely easy to defend because it's 99% planes, so you just blitzkrieg through them, and there's no more navy anymore, and no more army anymore, and there we go, capped. All right, so if we look here, we're dealing with the garrisons. Trying to assess my situation here and see what the best thing is to do. I think what I'm going to do is start producing destroyers as well. So what I'm going to do is replace that, take that off, add the my out for the escort fleet and anti-air, go for this, and just spam out a bunch of these. Once again, it's not going to be a long-term solution for my navy, but it's just something else to give it a little bit more edge. Is that the right word? The, the way screening ships work is they provide is almost like a meat shield buffer for your capital ships while the capital ships shoot over the top and do the real damage. However, if the screening efficiency drops below, they get to use their torpedoes on the capital ships, which are incredibly effective. However, you have to get through the screens first. And uh, if they get through the screens, then all my capital ships are dead anyway. So that's the reason why we make lots and lots of screens. I could make a bigger fleet, but do you know what? I, I don't know if I'm that invested into that. There's a chance I could make defensive fleets, defensive ships as well. If I was to make the, the most rubbish coastal defense fleet, I could make this production cost of 4,000. You know what? I'm going to do it. So a coastal defense ship is basically a battleship, but a very, very small hull. Oh, actually, you can assign so many naval dot yards to that. I'm also going to get rid of the mine off here because it's not a miner. It's a, a, it's a proper ship. Yeah, so it's basically a cruiser hull but it can actually have a big battery on it that a capital ship can have, like a, um, a battleship, even though that's not technically what I put on it. Mm, I guess a secondary battery with anti-air would be better. I don't know why I'm so vested into this, because I don't have the resources or the production capability to do this. It's just something I'm thinking is a side gig. I'll never have a navy big enough to be able to contest the allies, so it is a little bit pointless. So, what is the plan? We're going to basically put the majority of my army here, and Blitzkrieg around Brazil. We can we can justify that one in 15 days. Yep, 15 days. That's really good. However, we need horses to be able to defend this coast coastline. I think I'm gonna have to add a bit of anti artillery onto them as well, because otherwise they'll not have any uh, fighting capabilities. And we have to import the steel. America joins this war. I'm gonna have so limited resources to do anything. Okay, we've run into a problem here. We're getting supply by the ocean which can cause issues because we can get intercepted. So what you have to do here is look through your supply and see if the railways aren't connected. I think they are. Yeah, they are. They must be using a shipping lane because the docks are a higher level, so therefore more supply can come through that specific region. Man, they want to send us 3,000 guns. Germany, you're spoiling us. You might need that for Barbarossa, but you know what? I'm not going to say no. More mills and building them in core regions once again. Engine one, followed by engine two. Actually, we'll go for the machine guns first. And then we go for engine two. And then we now start making some transport planes, which will make sense as time goes on. Trust me, it makes sense. It'll make sense. And then we go for range improvements. Oh man, I can't believe I forgot about technology sharing. It's so OP. Why did I forget? Airborne assault. Ah. Oh. How convenient. It's almost like the game knew that's the direction we were even going to go. Ah. All right. Ploy the horses. Justify on Brazil. 15 days. Oh, that's insane. So here we have to make several front lines. One, two, and then three. Then we specifically have to select a general. We'll hire one who hasn't got a citation. He will do. Oh my God, we have triplets. And we're putting these guys on the front line. We might have to build some forts. Might, might not. I don't know. It might just be worthwhile just to build a few, just to be safe. I just don't want to do this. It's just such a waste of production, but whatever. Just a bunch of level two forts. Just, we can build them really quickly though. So don't make a massive overall impact. Just going to wait a little bit longer to get these guys to level three. Wait for some of the forts to finish. 
All right, we're actually producing a decent technology for our aircraft now. So we're, we're catching up. It's taking time, but we're getting there. We also want to add on the artillery once again onto the infantry, and maybe even the infantry equipment. Ah, oh, it's going to require a lot of training once again. We're going to have to exercise them or prepare them up again. Hey, it is what it is. You've got to prepare yourself for war, man. Prepare to win or prepare to lose. Ah. Okay, range improvements are done now. And we can start focusing on maybe excavation just to get a little bit more resources out of the areas that I'm occupying. Also, we're going to go for Operation Reservist. It's a special one for Mass Assault. That allows you to get a little bit of extra HP onto your divisions, which is useful because it means that divisions will take less overall losses in active combat. I think it's good to go. One. Off we go. This is scary because this is the war that's going to decide who's going to control South America. And look at my long boy versus the big tall boy of Brazil. Oh, they immediately attack. That's not something I expected. Okay, I think probably six divisions is maybe a little bit excessive. So I'm probably gonna drop that down to three. I'm curious these battles just to see how long they're gonna last, whether we can actually hold out. Because so I'm a little peek in to see how well they're doing. But as you can see, as we're pushing through the south, we're doing really well. Just make sure you make encirclements as you push further forward. Don't just push them back because you don't want to fight these boyos again. Ah, encircled four divisions. Nice, nice. That's what I wanted. Keep moving, lads. Keep going. Control B, front line. Heavy machine guns are due. Going to go for the bigger engine. Sure. All right, well, I should make a proper fighter now. So we'll do auto-generate. We'll max upgrade it. Biggest machine guns. We need the range because it's South America and range is dreadful. Max weight has been exceeded. So we need slightly smaller machine guns. So we'll go for the double lights. Yes. Auto upgrade, start producing them. Now, the biggest issue we're going to run into is lack of aluminium. And I realize how we get around that. We need this. Aircraft construction, non-strategic materials. Yeah, we need that. That's a biggie. See, right now we have no rubber and no aluminium. So the production we can get for our Air Force construction is kind of limited. So... Yeah, only rubber we can get is from Germany. Uh, just think about that for a second. Rubber from Germany. That doesn't even make sense. Once again, I'm kind of ignoring these battles. I just want to capture all these southern cities because this is where all the supply is anyway. We're actually holding here. Have we lost any land? No. Oh, I'm so proud of my boys. I'm so proud. I'm just going to wiggle a few divisions around in the front line just so we can hold the position. Same again. I think I'm going to go for more war bonds just to give my industry a little bit of a, a, little bit of a boost. Top it off, we need more building slots. So I'm going to rush for disperse four. Oh, this is going perfectly. Once again, supply depots, rush them, get that supply in. Keep pushing, push. More supply, more supply. Go, go, go. I've heard that supply is important. I don't know. People keep telling me supply is a big deal. Maybe it's something you want to focus on. An upgrade for our aircraft designer. Hey, I'm very thankful. Thank you, Paradox, for giving Peru an aircraft designer, even though it is kind of a rubbish one. Hey, but listen, little victories, all right? I'm going to queue up all the aircraft upgrades. Yeah, and they were unable to break our front line of the Amazon. That's good. If you would like to send us some guns, I would definitely accept that. Once again, we've reached this point. This is the hard point, the central part of Brazil. And I don't think there's a lot going on in this region. So you've got to just kind of persevere and keep just pushing forward until you reach the northern strip where all the ports are. I always feel like this is the bit you always get stuck. Here is a massive amount of infrastructure and supply. And there's like a band here, right here, where there's like barely no supply and it can cause problems. All right, new aircraft, upgrade it. Upgrade with Mayo. Yes. Replace the extra fuel tanks with non-strategic materials. So this reduces the production cost by 7.5, which is awesome. But the big deal is it reduces the aluminium uh, cost for the aircraft. That's, that's super big. It also loses some air defense, which is also kind of painful. But we're working with what we've got here, and we don't have a lot to work with. So when we get aluminium in the north, this region... Then we won't have to worry about that. But for now, I'm very conscious of our resources. All right, new plane, upgraded, get the new chassis, and then start researching the next chassis. Next one, another one. I love this little highway I've made here. That's really cute, isn't it? And that's an encirclement. Yep. Okay, it looks like Brazil's about to cap now. Brazil's a strange nation because it's so massive, but 90% of it, what, 80% of it is Amazon. So there really isn't much uh, factories, outputs, and supply other than the coastline. And right now, we're absolutely blitzkrieging around them. You know, I use the term blitzkrieg for practically everything now. <laughs> anyway, build infrastructure in this region because there's some steel. I guess I could do that here as well. We really need building slots right now. We've run out of them. All of Peru is uh, industrial, military infrastructure. 
Oh, there we go. Brazil has capped. All right. This is a, an amazing opportunity for me to do a massive cleanup, but it is also a potential nightmare because we're now going to be facing a new enemy. And that new enemy is called Supply because now we're in the Amazon. So we're going to attack with our horses just to pin them in. Then we're going to make a new front line all along here. Then I'm going to make a new bunch of new front lines around here. God, the front lines here are so hard to read. You know what they need to do is they need to make this a different color because this is impassable. It's really difficult to tell what is passable and what is impassable. I'm kind of dreading this. Anyway, let's go five speed and see what we can make of this. It's looking like they're connecting their front lines up pretty quickly anyway. It's not even looking like something I can even take advantage of. Keeping an eye on the supply here because I'm curious if they intercept all of my, my supplies, I'm going to have a lot of problems. I wonder if I could probably invest into submarines. And this just feels like a massive tech change. It just feels feels really inappropriate. But I mean, I mean, what else could I do at this point, you know? Because at this point, I realize I can't defeat the allies from South America easily by just, well, pushing through to, to the United States. So I realized to myself, I have to go around about it in a different way. Maybe a war of attrition. And thinking about submarines and paratroopers is something that might be the most advantageous thing to do. Yeah, it's just, I'm trying to think more long game here, lads. Ooh, stranded divisions. Come on, clean them up, tidy them up. Fine in the Amazon. They said it'd be fun, they'd say. They said it'd be fun. Okay, so the, my upgrades for the escort fleet, I want this one because it's, oh, it's this one. 5% extra production. So light attack and then that one. I think that's the correct path. It's starting to look like this bit and pushing into Suriname is going to be the hardest part at the moment. Yep, yeah, look, the supply here is just terrible. I'm going to brute force it for another month, but I don't actually think I can break this. I'm thankful for how much damage I have done at this point, but I don't think I can make any more gains on top of what I've already got. What are you doing, Mr. Raj Troops? What do you think you're doing? Okay, we've got Logistical Wizard, which fixes the supply by the, the most tiniest of morsel of difference. So that's not breakable. That's not breakable. Okay, so this, this is just not breakable anymore now. So that means I have to delete the front lines. The only way I could break this is if I use air. Let's move the planes back and I abuse the air mechanics and then see if we can make some front lines that are workable. See some of these divisions here are already broken and battered anyway. What's the best thing to do here? Do you think we should try and dig in here and wait for the planes to arrive? So I'm building air, build a, a naval base here, then build a railway ac across it. And you can see the supplies going all the way around. Luckily, I'm not getting combo ready, so that's pretty good. Thankful for that. And once again, we're making little victories here with the little encirclements. But once again, we need to consolidate our base here by uh, trying to make a more solidified front line. But God, the supply is so bad. I don't like this and sit in here because we're taking extra attrition that we don't need to. Look at the, the loss of our guns. So we're going to have to take off the artillery here. Ah, that hurts so much. That hurts a lot. Yeah, I didn't really want to do that, but I have to do it. So we've got the air XP now. We could diversify our, our uh, special forces, which we need to do. Just very shortly, we're going to be working on paratroopers. I want to be real with you guys. I don't like this new frontline system they've made here, Paradox. I don't like it. It's really hard to differentiate where the solid boundaries are and where the front lines start and end and what areas are impassable. You can see they're slightly darker. But just looking at this at a glance, it's like, what am I looking at? Okay, so there's not a connection here. So what I have to do is make a railroad to here. And then that's connected up. Yeah. And hopefully we're trying to avoid having to move things by sea. All right, bigger engine. Then we can go for the bigger plane. Then we need aluminium. And we need rubber. No one could give us rubber. Siam? Oh, three rubber. Okay, that's not going to work, is it? at these front lines i can't even make out what's happening here so this is the state line and they've kind of maneuvered here so i can push into this front line i'm glad we've got the extra horses here so i can actually make out what's happening you're gonna go here and you're gonna go here then there's another front line here and then you miss one province and the ai leaks into it and it's like pulling your hair out uh submarine has been completed can we go for the next one yes so let's just do it Yep, yeah, I'm unfortunately, I'm going to abandon my little ground-based fleet and go for a submarine fleet. I think we're going to go for this. I think we're going to go for something relatively well-equipped. I'll be honest with you, I've not convoy raided in a really long time. I've heard it's been a nerf to death. I've heard it's nowhere near as effective as it used to be. All right, disperse four is done. 
this is good news for me because now we have opportunities to build some naval dot yards and i think i might make some sieves just a few though still not got many building slots it's not even made that much difference all right they've naval invaded on rio that's interesting uh okay you're gonna go here you're gonna go here N naval invade here outtake 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 all right yes you're gonna you're gonna go here and then you're gonna go here once again the supply here is still horrendous we have to push into here immediately because otherwise if they break out from this one port we're gonna be in a really bad state it looks like we have actually pinned them in. Yeah, that's good. Ah, I got them. Get out of here. Uh, it looks like America has cut off trade with us. Oh, no. No. It did say for a second they did, but then they're trading with us again. We were the bad guy for just a brief second. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, okay, we'll trade with you. Okay. Ah, they're pushing to here. And this is where I was building a bloody port. You swine. Okay, so these front lines now look a little bit more structured than they once were. I'm just using a bunch of divisions, just a handful, just to hold the front line. There's a front here, then there's a front here, and then there's a front here. All right, as I said to you, this is the part where it's kind of turned into a bit of a war of attrition. I'm going to start building my navy up and pop it here. We'll focus on submarine production, even though we've not got a mile for that, which makes me super sad, but it is what it is. We're we doing on resources. We're doing good. Piggybacking equipment. We have an upgrade for our machine guns, giving reliability. Yeah, whatever, we'll do it. It'll help for the attrition anyway. We've got an air force now. Let's deploy a bunch of planes and exercise those to level three. Shift left click. Building for this port to build. When it's done, then we can actually make some movements. But right now, we're just burning through equipment, costing us so much equipment. We've actually got some rubber now from the Amazon, from what we've gained from uh, Brazil. Germany would like to send us some fires. How is Germany doing? They're not at war with the Soviet yet, and they're not able to break Greece. Classic Axis unable to break Greece. We need they need some supply in the middle of um, Greece, otherwise they're never able to break it. All right, let's see if we can take advantage of any research bonuses. The only one I can see is the armored train. We are making an air force though, so technically, do we even need armored train? I don't know. A bigger engine in the fighter plane. That's good. Right, we're holding the front lines now. It feels relatively secure. Supplies a little bit better here. What do we do? I think what we do is we make the front line here super narrow. However, two divisions stay here and two divisions stay here. What I'm doing is pressing S to split. So I only select two. So if you grab the whole chunk, you see you selected four, then it S to split into two. And then we railroad you guys to the front line. Then we'll use all of you guys to break into here, then break into here. Then they're in a bit of a supply dead zone. And then, hopefully, we can mo make more gains after that. I've just realized we can upgrade the machine guns on you as well. Bigger machine guns, bigger machine guns. I think maybe add a little bit of extra fuel. And that's exactly 25 thrust, 25 weight. I'll give it a different icon so I remember it. There you go. And what we'll do now is get off technology sharing and we'll go on to air production to make planes cheaper. It's either that or naval production. I think naval production would be more advantageous for us right now just due to the position we're in oh and they're counter-attacking us here so it makes me want to feel like i want to narrow that front line to here and then move you guys back to here i'll be honest with you guys i don't expect any of you guys who aren't pros at the game to fully understand this uh impassable terrain system i think once again there's nothing wrong with this it's a great system i like that there's like corridors in the amazon you travel through next to the rivers that's a really cool concept it's just visually very difficult to see my advice to you is select the Amazon, look at the corridors, and from here, you can kind of guess where the front lines go. That's the only thing I can recommend to you. All right, we've upgraded all our planes to get the max bonuses, so we'll just get more trait slots, even though these are ones that we're never even going to take advantage of, but we'll just queue them up just so we're getting the traits, so eventually we can get a policy later on. All right, we're in a position now where you you are good to go, right? Yep, we're in a good spot. Aggressive, go. These guys are attacking the wrong spot, so I'm just going to press H on him to stop him and then control right click to push here. The plan is to shift right click and then move into this region. Is it enough firepower? Is it too much? Is this doable? No, it's not doable. This is one of the instances where we're going to need paratroopers. I think what we're going to do is do the paratrooper exploity thing. So one battalion of paratroopers and we'll get like, uh, I don't know, 16 of those, I guess. So there's a new thing here for special forces, which allows you to do this one, combat insertion. And what it does is whenever you power drop on onto an existing location where a division is, that division that you land on top of will lose org. And it's like a way of pushing the front line and breaking further forward. 
It is incredibly strong. Highly recommended. Okay, we need centralized control. And that's going to give us extra range in the Amazon. And also, we're going to need an airport in this region. If I build an air... Oh, I hate this. So I control this region. However, the airport is owned by the enemy. So we're building inside of the enemy. Who thought that was a good mechanic? Oh my god, I'm so mad. I'm so angry. The rage is flowing through me. <laughs> He's such a weird mechanic, isn't it? You think about it. Oh, I'm going to build an airport inside of the enemy. Oh. That means we have to start building that and then build the airport here. Meanwhile, Paraguay's just sitting here like, what's happening? What's happening here? Wake up. <laughs> Oh, they're actually breaking you? Are you for real? All right, sub three. Upgrade, sub three. Big torpedo tubes, the biggest of tubes. And we, what we're doing here is just saying that this roll finishes, then we start producing the new submarines, which have like way better extra defense, so therefore they can do more decent amount of damage. I'm going to basically queue them all up into this submarine fleet. I presume it's the blue fleet here. Yeah, it is. Get a new admiral, he will do. So what I could do here is try and abuse the mechanics. So if you go for the best of the best, you basically get an admiral that has extra stats. So they're all level threes now, and this guy's got four attack. Yeah, he's really good, and he's the one I'm going to go for. I love how they're all like twins. You look the same as this guy. You look the same as this guy. There's actually four of him. One, two, three, four. Damn, I love this game. Ah, that's so frustrating. I have to like... I guess I've retreated back to another position now, I guess. Ah, that's so annoying, but whatever. Whatever. It's all good. It's all good. So this must be a big port. That's why they want to move it by sea. So it's level 7 port to a level 5 port. And that's why it's choosing to move it by sea, because they, they can move a higher capacity of supply. If I was to improve the supply throughout the entirety of the region, it's going to take ages to get supply to the right region. The only thing I can think of is building a bigger port up here. We've got any air control happening here? A little bit of enemy. Oh, actually, that enemy? Air region here is enemy bombers, but no actual allied planes. Okay. Let's move you guys over to here and let's see what damage we can do. Yeah, I realize the right thing to do here. Okay, we'll not bog the supply down anymore. I realize that's a very British expression to bog something down. To overcrowd something. Dave's British is coming out. British? On the internet? Is that legal? Once again, we exercise everyone to level 3. We've got loads of transports. We're going to deploy the paratroopers. They're crap paratroopers, but I don't care. They're not meant to fight. They're just for the sole purpose of taking advantage of the low org mechanic. Pop you here. Move to this airport. Once again, we're just doing it solely to abuse game mechanics for no other reason. Yeah, he's getting very aggressive and pushing against me here. All right. Oh, this, this is the horse guy. <laughs> the guy's been fighting for so long. He's got so awesome stats now. I'm proud of him. All right. Air superiority. Close air support in this region. Do we have air superiority? Yes, we do. Full air superiority. Do we have transport planes? Yes, we've got loads of transport planes. We do not have enough air airports, though. We're running low by, like... A few, a, a few percentage points. We're making too many transport planes now, so we don't need as many of those. And now, we're in a spot where we can start doing the power drops. So the way it works is 50 transport planes will do one power drop of one division, regardless of how big that division is. In this case, this division is very, very, very small because it's one battalion. Uh, so it doesn't make a lot of sense because the mechanics are so strange like that. It should technically be a proportional amount, but it's not. 50 transports equals one division, regardless of size. So we're going to do a power drop now from here to here. I know you're probably thinking, why don't you power drop here? But what we're doing is it to help break the front line. We're not actually doing it to capture this, or yet, anyway. We're going to disable assigning them. We'll activate the battle plan and start attacking. And by the looks of things, we'll probably struggle to break it. Yeah, they're too heavily dug in. The allies have got really good defense. It ain't happening. But now we do the power drop, and we'll just assign two. So shift left, click two. Control, click on the front line. And we drop them in. And we'll just grab a few. Because I realize we have got quite a few, haven't we? Just power drop them. And it instantly breaks them. God, it's so OP. Oh, it's so strong. I love this so much. All right, then push in now. Then we're going to do another power drop. And this power drop is going to be from here to here. And that is there we we're going to capture next. Once again, unassign them. Because you can't assign too many. You can only assign the maximum amount. Which in this case is four. Because I've got tw uh, 200, um, 200 of my paratroopers. We have armored trains now. Let's start making those then. Can we do another power drop? Another one. Yep. And we capture it. Oh, man. I love this so much. That's so OP. 
it, it, you know it's weird because it's strong it's broken and it doesn't feel like it should be in the game but you're wrong it should be in the game because it needs to be those situations where a region is so unbelievably entrenched there needs to be a way of being able to break it and that is how you break it oh, i'm so proud of the devs because that is such a good mechanic it just feels like it should it's something that just feels like it's in the game and it's like that should always have been there from the very beginning Anyway, transport points. Let's move them further forward. We can now do our transporting into this region. And then we could just continually keep doing power drops on top of them to break them back. The only real way, by the way, of countering this is to get air superiority back from me. That's the real way of doing it. But then once again, the AI doesn't feel like it fully understands the mechanics. All right, we're in the position now. The boys are moving forward. We've started a new battle. I don't think even we need to power drop. We're not. We can just do it without it. But once again, when we move up to here and start breaking Suriname, this region is locked in. Now they're probably having a nightmare for supply due to this was the big port, but then they've got this one. But when we cut this off, it means the Amazon is, is broke away from Suriname. I keep calling it Suriname. It's Guyana. Suriname is one of these, isn't it? No, Suriname is the Netherlands one. And Guyana is the British one. Guys, remember, I'm a Hearts of Iron 4 player. I don't know the names of the countries past 1940, all right? Just remember that. <laughs> Just remember, don't ask a Hoy player to name African countries other than Ethiopia and Liberia. All right, we're pushing. And once again, I'm going to do the exact same thing. One, two, three, four. Do we have air superiority? It doesn't seem to be doing a power drop. I wonder why. Oh, I'm going to activate the plan. Dave, you fool. Power drop once again. And you can see like deorgs them immediately. It doesn't seem to be as effective this time around. Another one. Boom, broke them. And once again, keep moving, lads. Keep going. And can we power drop from here to here? No, we can't. That's a biggie. But can we build an airport here? Yes, we can. So we should do that. One thing I always forget about is these ones. These add extra building slots. This is going to be a building slot in Santiago. That's not where I want it, though. Yeah, we'll build it there anyway. I think these guys are stranded here. Yeah, they are. I'm kind of tempted to make my paratrooper divisions actually good. Can I convert to the big template? No, because too many. So let's make them 10 width and then add on some artillery maybe. And then we delete one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Can we convert to the big division? No. Nine of them maybe? No. I kind of want to give them fighting capabilities. That's the reason why. Oh, I can't believe you're doing this to me game. Why? You're making me delete my ones that have got citations and my good, good divisions. All right, we can do six. Yeah, and we're struggling to break these Brazilian ones here. And that's always going to be hard. We're passing over a river into jungles. It's a classic Hoi 4 problem, I guess. It's just difficult to break that specific region. So we're going to fly you guys over to here. Then we'll move the paratroopers over to here. Oh, we can actually train one more. We'll train one more. So it's going to be seven divisions overall. These divisions now have some fighting capabilities to them. So they're not just kind of like, I don't know, kind of like suicide divisions. All right. We're going to move into here. Then you guys are going to move into here. Uh, these ones are like they're going to break. How long will it take? 25 days. We'll do the northern ones first. Three divisions. Off you go. And then the other three divisions. So look for the ones with the red exclamation mark. That means they've not been assigned to a mission. Then you can select them, move them over. There you go. Easy. Easy. All right. Once again, they've been broken in the north. That's good. That means we don't have to cover our backs as we move further forward. You're going to go here. You're going to go here. Going to staff office plan to build that planning bonus up. Moving our paratroopers back into position. Three, two, one, power drop here. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm getting a really nice, nice, smooth high from doing this little power drooper thing. It's making me feel really good, all right? Night attack bonus. Navy, I forget about Navy. And also go for naval refit after when you're actually at war because you don't want this naval reform bonus. I've just thought for a second, what are we doing? I think I'm going to go for air crew surveys now to get maximum out of my air XP. Deploy this extra paratrooper. And then I'll then we'll do the attack again. Attack. Yes again. Can't break. Can't break it. Too many divisions assigned, so we'll assign a few. There we go. Drop them in. Rest of the boyos, off you go. And there we go. Broken them. Oh, this mechanic is so good. <sighs> Meanwhile, Amazon, they've managed to push us back even further. And then you guys are gonna go one here, then two here, and then three through the center. The only issue we're going to run into now is we might run out of range. No, no, we're not. No, we're not. Wrong. We're not going to run out of range. Drop into the north. I'll drop into the north and off the go again. It'd be kind of nice if they had some speed, so therefore they can be fast enough to overrun these divisions. And oh, I thought they were going to then. They were like inches away. 
so weird that I have to keep moving back to do another power drop over and over again. It kind of feels a bit wonky in a way, doesn't it? Okay, slow and steady is definitely going to win the race, and that is definitely the long-term plan we're going for anyway. Oh, we did actually manage to break that one. Okay. You guys are pushing northward. Oh, my, it's all part of the plan. All part of the plan. All right, and they realize they can push through the other side as well. All right, so the plan now is to secure these northern ports, and then the allies are completely stranded. Does that mean I can power drop from the south? No. Need to build an airbase in this region, and I have a feeling we're building an airbase on the wrong side. Oh, and I think we don't have air superiority anymore in this region either. Desperately need steel. Get that from Sweden, of all people. And are we at war with America now? Yeah, we are. Okay. Doctrines. Did say I was going to go for the manpower, but we're never going to have manpower problems. So maybe I go for deep battle. Deep battle is good because it has a 20% supply reduction. And it also allows lots of org bonuses as well. It's just something a bit different, lads. D deep battle Peru. Whoever thought that's where this campaign was going, right? So it does turn out that it's in our territory, the airport. I want to move further forward now and do a power drop. Going for the recon because I've got ranges and it gives a reconnaissance bonus. Is this something that's going to help me in the, in the long run? Probably not, but I'm just going to give it a shot. All right, move further forward. Then we do the power drop. Do we have air superiority to do the power drop? That is a question. Yeah, we do. And then another power drop. Oh! Clicked on the wrong front line. And then... Oh, we're still struggling. No, we're not struggling. No, we're not. Go, go, go. We're so close. So close to the objective now. We're so... I can smell victory. Okay, we've got some free civilian factories. So I'm going to assign those to more naval dot yards. I'm, once again, I'm going to become the convoy raider of the Atlantic. That wasn't my original plan, but this is how this game's turned out. Uh, guns, sure. So we're going to cancel the front lines here and remake them again. Do realize these guys are creeping behind me here. And that's actually stressing me out a little bit. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the reverse meme. And then power drop behind me. This is getting kind of silly when it comes down to the power drops, doesn't it? Are we able to power drop here? For some reason we don't have air superiority for some reason. There we go. And then the rest of them. There we go. Yeah, for some reason, they're really adamantly defending this region. What I'll have to do is pull off these reserves. Luckily, I do have reserves. I didn't think about that. And then pull you guys forward. Focus in more artillery tech to get the big bonuses. We just realized there's an upgrade for my guns. Soft attack for guns. That's why you make them. But the option to upgrade old planes. I always like to do this. Just good etiquette. Because at the end of the day, quality of planes makes a big impact on their performance in the air. So it's always something to be good to be on top of. One of my divisions got air overrun then. That's made me very sad, but it can happen due to these regions due to like air superiority problems and whatnot. I realize getting air superiority is going to be a nightmare here. So I'm going to have to build a big airport in this region. This is the reason why we've, we've made planes that have got good range. That was like a number one thing because this region of the world is just really bad for range. So let's see if I can do a power drop. I'll give it a go. I don't think it's going to work though. Oh, don't attack the southern one. You want, you want the northern one with the port. Yep, I'm able to power drop. I don't know how, but I am. There you go. Grabbed. Yoink. Mine. Again! But this time, this port. For some reason, they seem to want to go to this front line. I don't know why they keep doing this. I think it's something to do with the fact that they're connected to Field Marshal, and they kind of want to go back to the Field Marshal front line. Oh, it's really annoying. Keep going back to the order I gave you. The power drop. Come on. And there we go. Another one. Captured. I realize that's not even a port, that one. Is there an air base here? Yeah, but we'll build one anyway. I'm going to assign my air force now onto this general because he's the one on the front now and it should just micromanage them to the right location. But then again, I can still power drop from here again and land where I want to go. So I might as well just do that. Building airports as I go. Yeah, boom, another one. And then finally finish up. Power drop, power drop off you go i'm sorry guys this is getting a little bit repetitive and i acknowledge that too however I, I, do i feel like i need to show this as a part of the video because i mean i am microing quite heavily with the paratroopers so is this crucial for the overall performance of the video i don't even know let me know in the comments guys let me know if i'm drabbling on for too long all right power drop again and then again and then we finally broke them that's it and we now have full control of the amazon I don't think anyone else is in the Allies. That's it. Now they are locked into this region. I think I lost a paratrooper. Did I? No, I didn't. He was seven I had all along. That's good. It's it's weird to know what to do at this point because do I just wait for them to bleed out from supply? I'm not actually quite sure what to do because I don't really want to push into the Amazon because that's like a massive supply hole in the world and I don't really want to be venturing into there, you know? Look how bad the supply is. It's so awful. 
Okay, so there's a bunch of decisions I'm pressing here. This war support bonus is pretty good. This one's good too. There's also worker conditions for more stability, which reduces resistance, which is also quite useful. Air production feels like it's not as worthwhile for me now. I think I want to probably go for something like resistance reduction. Probably having a spy agency is probably going to be worthwhile for me, just so I can reduce supply a little bit in some of these regions. Look at the supply of 41%. That's just so high. And if you look at the occupied territories and garrison log, you see our last 12 months, we lost 64k manpower and like 14k guns. It's just a stupid amount of equipment lost and, and manpower. So, yeah. All right, you're going to push here. You're going to push here and push here. What a waste of equipment. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> the only one that's winning is in the north. I'm encouraged just to do more power drops. What do you think, guys? More power drops? Press one in the chat if you think power drops are great garrisons for towed artillery oh shoot i realize this is my garrison template what i'm actually gonna do is take off the artillery because i don't even think they need the artillery anymore now Nah, they don't you have one naval bomber or three planes we'll do some naval strikes there and we can assign a hotkey for fighters i'll exercise those up i think they got encircled and overrun in the north okay the amazon finally now has been liberated the encirclement potential in this region now is going to be absolutely insane. Yeah, let's go for anti-partisan. And then we replace the military guy with the elusive gentleman to gain the plus one spy. And then I suppose we can also become a spy man. So once we've got three upgrades, there is one supply depot here and that's it. And then there's no more. So I think that's a good location to do a power drop on. Yeah, let's do that. And that means that the supply here is strictly limited. And then I suppose they're going to burn out from attrition. Power drop and then the rest there we go meanwhile in europe italy losing africa nothing new there vichy france is at war with the allies now i always wonder when i look at europe sometimes what can i do to help oh oh this is actually looking like a winning barbarossa now you don't see this very often so can we click on wars what we got the peru bolivian war nice where is the soviet union where is it Current wars, Italian Ethiopian war. 97%. We're gonna get an Axis win. I am so lucky. Guys, that does not happen very often. That does not happen very often. Once in a blue moon. Okay, steel. We need a lot of it. And Sweden, a classic supporter of the war in the Pacific. Atlantic Pacific. Hey, we have both. We have both. Why not both oceans, right? Suppliers with the steel so we can make submarines to sink allied trade right okay spies so let's go for the route out resistance it's hard to make this out but it doesn't always cover just the region it also covers around it if you look really closely you can actually oh, it's so hard to make out but you can see it's covering a region it's coming from all of this and all of this if i go for the center so you want to try and stick it as close to the middle as possible and also aim for the areas that have the highest resistance particularly capital cities they've got lots of pop as you can see around rio here in this region it's higher than oh, i suppose it's very average it's all around about the same actually is me trying to find a pattern and it's like where is the pattern there is no pattern dave all right now we've got a few upgrades we need three upgrades so we're working on the third one now then you can become a spy master spy master just means every major power that's a part of that faction will now contribute one spy to you so in that case the major powers in the axis are germany italy and japan no actually no it's germany and italy so that means i gain plus two spies by becoming the spy master all right another spy once again, keep an eye on the region that you're going to be controlling and we'll stick it relatively in the middle and that should reduce the resistance in those regions and therefore I'll get less resistance, therefore I'll lose less manpower. Once again, this is not something I do very often because I feel like spires can be used more practically in different areas of the world. But in this circumstance, I guess not. All right, more building slots. All right, lads, can we just end this now and clear this up? I'm getting kind of a little bit bored of this Amazon BS. I realize these guys are stranded. Crack team of... Uh, Peru paratroopers, the real saviors of the Amazon. This is the history that everyone wanted. There we go. Boom. More naval dot yards. I feel really confident with the size of my industry right now, so I'm quite happy to branch out. Germany's, well, actually, Norway's Germany sending me stuff. Upgrade some fighters. I'm going to do that. All production wise, everything's looking pretty sweet. Once again, closing all the pockets in. Finally, the Amazon's been liberated. Thank goodness. All right, we've got three upgrades now. So can we become a spy master? No, you need three different upgrades. Oh, three different ones. Oh, three branches. And this would be the third branch. This branch, this branch, and this branch. Ah, do you know what, man? How many hours I've got in this game? I'm learning new things as I go. Every day, one day wiser. Okay, we need torpedoes now. 
because if you want to do good sub subway rating subway rating convoy rating you need good torpedo ships so torpedoes are these three now you can upgrade torpedoes one two and three so let's do that didn't say yes to that gives you a pop of saying are you sure i am sure all right we got subs i'm just gonna exercise these boys to level three and we're actually pumping these out in quite big numbers now as well we have 44 submarines we also get another 10 percent supply reduction from deep bow so i'll take that and finally the amazon is being liberated you see it always annoys me and gripes me a little bit that when supply can be so low but you can still hold on to this point there should be like a minimum threshold of supply where if you've been out of supply for like two months there should be no supplies left and you should be able to just close the pocket instantly i suppose this is meant to recreate like resistance movements i suppose look on the spy master plus three spies i was wrong there is another major in the axis someone in the comments is going to tell me who i've missed and there we go the final pocket close it off and finally eliminate them yeah guys i'll be honest with you man you want to do everything possible to avoid having to fight in this region this area of the world is just an absolute pain in the ass are these encirclements worth it at the end four south african divisions they're the final ones pop and they're gone all right horses we're gonna put them onto a different theater put them on low priority meaning supplies will go to that division last then i'm gonna make a garrison along the coastline just the north and the east because that's the most prioritized regions where the allies are likely to land i think going any further south here no i have to go all the way to the south because i have to think about the falcon islands that could naval invade in this region that could be a problem and then we'll specifically designate this to cover the coastlines and we only need 25 divisions we've got 24. okay wow i didn't think we'd have enough but there you go we'll get another six and then those guys will be a part of the garrison nice this guy's a really well-trained general too so he'd probably be better on the front line we're probably better off swapping him off with someone else we got someone this defensive guy's good yeah he could be the paratrooper guy and another spy okay we can get another spy so who do we go for he's a commando Will that even make much difference? Probably not. All right, we're going to go here for you. And the other three spiles I'll use to put in the UK to see if I can control the convoy raiding or something for the... When I convoy raid the, the allies, basically. Oh, attempting a D-Day, are we? And they annex the Soviet Union. Oh, ho, 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 ho. this is an Axis victory. But Japan's not doing very well. Classic, classic. Oh my goodness, guys. This is this is turning into an actual game. We got a proper game on our hands now. We got an actual game on our hands. I think it's funny that all three of these generals are the same dude. <laughs> They're on loop. I'm going to build inside of Ecuador because eventually I am going to annex them at some point. Sweden, thank you for supplying us with steel always reliable sweden so now i'm thinking more of a long game now i'm thinking more about what impact can i make when it comes down to the our air force what impact can i make when it comes down to our navy and i realize at this point i'm kind of stranded this part of the world obviously i suppose i could move further north to try and take out Colombia, venezuela and panama just for the sole reason of forming um bolivar's legacy and i probably will do that actually spies in britain we also have the option now for our aircraft designer to add a policy because it's level six. And the best one I think we can go for is the agility boost. It's not a big boost, but it gives us an extra edge for dogfighting. So it's definitely a win. We do have unlimited aluminium now, so we don't even need this extra meme. So we could go for armor plates. The initial armor plates, it reduces my range. Ooh, by a hefty amount. Oh, hang on, wrong one, wrong one. We're placing the wrong one. Ah, oh, barely any change. Ah, oh, the weight goes over though. Mm. Oh, that's up. Alternatively, we could go for self-sealing. Oh, we're still over the weight limit anyway. Oh no, never mind. Makes a difference anyway. Now yeah, we'll stick with what we've got. We'll not. We'll just not import. Oh, it's so tempting to to do it though. It's so tempting. But no, I'm gonna resist. It doesn't matter. We're also in a situation where our equipment designer can have a policy, and the only one to go for is this one to reduce the cost of the steel. It means we have to import less steel, but if we are low on steel, we suffer from a bigger penalty. It's just a way that we can save our economy by the tiniest amount. All right. These guys are almost level three. When they are level three, we immediately start convoy raiding. And this Cape Verde plane is where we're going to do it. We need naval bombers, though. So aircraft, go for a big engine. We add a Mayo on. It's going to be torpedo. And I'm also going to add a machine gun on it just so I can use it flexibly as an air superiority fighter if I need to. But you definitely need range now. So extra pods. 
yeah drop tanks and the extra fuel tanks make it a nav well how do we make it look like a nav are oh, there are any that look like navs here we'll have to just go for the white plane all right naval bomber the first one deploy their wing start hitting that sea region we can get a decent amount of coverage about 40 percent so now the spies i want to put into britain so we can get an idea of their efficiency for um their navy and therefore when i start hitting the commas and get an idea of how many i'm actually striking right our navy's in a good spot now so we're gonna send it back home we'll repair it up and then we'll start combo raiding the best thing to do with combo raiding is to start in a small region so we're going to go here we're also going to split off and we're going to make sure we engage only medium risk of course trade interdiction is a no-brainer right yeah 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 it's a no-brainer then the right path is all about submarine bonuses yep i'm going to go with my initial plan and i'm going to start pushing into columbia now you guys here and off you go we can also push through the amazon on this side as well we put the paratroopers on this side we're only going to use the paratroopers if we explicitly need them i don't think we're ever going to need them though if you find that the front line doesn't attach immediately, press tab and it will cycle through all the different front lines so you find the one you want. It's just a, it's a typical newbie problem that you find to run into quite frequently. Dispersed four is done. And does it give us any building slots? Oh, it has. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. First time I'm like, okay, this it's something. At the same time, we'll build all in our core regions. Good. And do you know what? We've got actual too many naval dot yards now. I don't think we need that many. No, we don't need that many anymore. We're actually slightly overproducing on our Navy now. All right, combo rating. Are we hitting stuff? Yes, we are. Yep. And it is, in this case, Italian troops. Uh, I'm so confused. Was that Italy? Mexico. Okay. Dave doesn't know the flags. Justify on Colombia. Bigger torpedo. Another bigger torpedo. Surprisingly, this isn't classed as auto upgrade, though. The bigger torpedo. I wonder why. Yeah, it's not classed as an upgrade, even though it is a torpedo mark II. Okay, in this circumstance, you also find that if you split off the fleets, press D to split, and then you have to click auto repair split off, you tend to be a little bit more effective of how much you can intercept. And right now in this position, well, there's a lot of enemy ships here still, but we're still hitting lots and lots of stuff. So I don't know this is going really well. I'm happy with this. Doctrines, don't forget about them. Lots of org, a lot of org for tanks that we're never going to use, but doctrines complete them right so it's a big deal right this is going to be very difficult for d-day to work because germany now is super powered there isn't usually a small window where germany's weak because they have to garrison all this region but usually at this point they're very 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 strong colombia attack Pull to arms ecuador they're gonna join the war yep so right now the weak i'll destroy them my air force is amazing the only issue is when the allies arrive they may be able to hold out a decent defense so i have to make sure i cap them really quickly and by loads of things it is going straight forward okay we can start justifying on venezuela now the amount of resistance from colombia is um really limited this is a big impact this because what's going to happen now is the allies are going to have more limited options for fuel can't get it from the soviet union anymore can't get it from colombia or venezuela or peru realize there's an option for me to gain a significant more more rubber as well am i having issues with rubber no i'm not so let's not Take care of that. What resource are we having issues with? Oh, it's always steel, isn't it? And everywhere there's possible steel we've maxed out. Oh, there's 10 there, I guess. Oh, there's a bit in uh, Rio as well. We'll go for that too. At the same time, we're going to make sure we stack excavation so we're getting the most resources too. Also going to start working on radar because radar is good for detecting ships. So therefore we can combo raid more efficiently. Right now we're hitting so much stuff in the Cape Verde plane. I'm just going to keep hitting it. It's supplying this region basically and getting supplies towards this Vichy France part of the axis it's giving a it's strengthening the axis in this region so that's good all right well everyone where they need to be Venezuela is next a really tough nation to annex due to the islands to the north but we've got paratroopers so I'll show you the little trick for that very shortly realize I've forgotten something for the uh naval bomber I need to have floats for surface detection yeah that's a biggie that because that enhances my ability to spot enemy ships and it, since they introduced that feature for planes i feel like it's very difficult to spot ships anymore with naval bombers the final thing to do is clean up the islands and we're gonna be able to break the islands no paratroopers you needed max out this air base in the north oh what do we have here the allies are actually defending the convoys in this region now do we lose anything no but they lost a battleship so what happens is when you start to see capital ships getting struck by submarines, there's something very important to remember. 
it means that their screens aren't being efficient anymore. And that normally means that they don't have enough screens anymore. If you have a little peek at Britain right now, you look at their Navy, and they have 193 destroyers. So that is definitely not the case. <laughs> so I don't know what's happening there. Something's happening, but I don't know what it is. Okay, we're going to have to build up Ecuador some more, and we need to lower, lower their autonomy. So otherwise, we'll not be able to do, form our formable nation. Form the formable. Oh, we grabbed the islands. Fine, okay. Now, we power drop onto the Dutch islands. Power drop, power drop, power drop. And then we took the island again. Good. I suppose what I could do as well is I drop on these islands as well. I never think to do that. But if you think about it, look, they're all connected with these little straits. Oh, do we do that? But technically, we could get stuck on the straits and then lose divisions. No, let's not do that. Come on. Come on, Dave. Be smart. Be smart. Okay, classic trick to annex a puppet is to send them a massive amount of convoys. Oh, no. Send Lenny's convoys. Send all of them. 300 autonomy. That's not that much. Just basically nothing. Alternatively, you build inside your puppet. Yeah, alternatively, you build in them. And then if you look closely, now we're building in them. The autonomy is 574. Then it's 571. You can see every time you basically build in successfully inside of them, you reduce their autonomy. Even if you're not actually completing the building, which is really bizarre, but that's how the game mechanics work. All right, it did look like some of our subs took a bit of a beating recently because some of them are getting repaired. Yeah, we lost one here. It looks like the allies are contesting this region now, probably because the Axes have lost their foothold here. Might as well research the final aircraft model. Be aware when you do that, you're also going to need the bigger engine because the, the more advanced chassis way more, so you need the bigger engine for them to take off. Okay, one issue with supply here. Look at all these supply routes. So the way you fix this is you connect them all up with a railroad. Just run a railroad all the way across. And then same again, railroad all the way here. What I'm trying to do here is minimize the amount of convoys needed to maintain supply in these regions. In this case, this is the reason why I'm building the um, the railways. We've got the final torpedo, so we'll unlock that and pop that on. What I like to do is just check on my subs and just see how well they're doing. So every now and then I like keep a tab on them, watch what they've detected, and from there, see who they're intercepting. So right now these are freight convoys from Belgium that instantly get sunk immediately. Once again, if you're hitting convoys in a region, stay in that region, stay there, don't spread out, don't try to intercept more convoys. Right now you're, you're doing, you're effectively hitting their convoys, so just keep hitting them. Keep up the pressure. Panama justification. There you go. We get to grab the Panama Canal, which is a big strategic loss for the Allies, meaning they're going to have to go through the bottom of my nation, which could cause them to get intercepted. The convoys have to go around the region. Think about it. From the trade routes around the world, do you have to go through the Cape or the Suez? Or you have to go through the Panama? Or you have to go through... I forget what this is called. Sargene Coast, Sargene Coast. So when you cut off those said regions, you, you you change the way the supply works around the world. And there we go, the Panamese have capped. I think they're good to build inside of a nation to lower their autonomy's ports. They're so unbelievably expensive. But remember, you don't have to complete the building to reduce the autonomy. You just have to keep building inside of them. Same with like a, I don't know, like a coastal fort, for instance. Once again, it'll still keep reducing their autonomy over time. And surprisingly, look, I think what's happening here is because I'm helping them in Cape Verde here and eliminating trade and uh, limiting their ability to project from the Eastern Sphere to the Western Sphere by me doing this here, they're actually strengthening them in North Africa. And this is an area that Vichy France had, but the, the Allies did annex this. Uh, the Axis Allies. The Annex. The Annex. The Allies. Outtake, outtake, outtake. And this was part of Vichy France, but now the Axis annexed it. Completed my land doctrine. Um, navy stuff. Strategic destruction is the way forward because you've got naval striking here. And then you've also got uh, agility bonuses for your fighters as well. So it'll benefit both of my um, aircraft, my main aircraft designs. As I mentioned, this is now a war of attrition. And the next step is to form Bolivar's Legacy, which gives me a bunch of cores, which sort of sorts out a lot of resistance problems. And then I suppose I could do the classic trick. I start to push through South America, I guess. Central America, South America. When does it become South and when does it become North? Someone tell, someone tell me in the comments. Also, I've realized that this nation is one I've completely ignored for the entirety of the game. Paraguay? Be aware, Paraguay, if you attack it from one angle, is actually one of the harder nations to annex in the game because this capital has got this defensive modifier here, River Navy, and it's really difficult to break. Oh, sorry, I forgot about snorkels as well. Reduces sub-visibility. Something I've never really um, 
played with much to know how effective that is is it effective is it not effective i just don't know <laughs> i don't know all right another strat i usually do late game is go for rockets because this unlocks the rocket rails which is a really useful way of having uh, air superiority fighters that do some ground attacking as well i'll explain more about when i got it researched oh they're still winning here and still holding out just because of the amount of combo rating i'm doing here ah oh, control of this region is so important what i actually want to do is control these islands that would be ideal i wonder if we could get enough naval supremacy here to actually do a naval invasion or even better could we do oh this is probably a bit of a reach could we power drop to these islands from here that's so far that's no way that's gonna work no that wouldn't work it's way too far <laughs> That's a cool idea anyway. Anyway, build a radar here just for detection, which is going to help our combo rating, and it will also help our naval striking. And also top that off, is going to go for an airport as well. And more radar, and more radar. Paraguay! I'm, I'm so curious to see how well they're going to hold out. We reduce the autonomy of Ecuador too, and we just need to reduce it by another 1,500 points. Ow. No, absolutely annihilate. They didn't even have time to run uh to hold out on their capital oh i forget they, they, they survived to the very final province though okay that might be a little bit different than i expected okay so now we've got a bigger engine and i'm gonna put armor on this guy and it can still take off that's good make sure the icon's different otherwise i'll get it confused with something else and then this one the naval bomber now we have a more up-to-date design have we no we've not we'll wait for this to finish because then it will auto upgrade to the latest model and then you gain more building slots when it upgrades guys finish them a little bit of Mortal Kombat came out then. You don't want to give them any opportunity to entrench because once again, I said to you earlier, Paraguay is a nightmare for this. There you go. Ripped. Ripped in two. Do I have naval invasion tech? No. I don't. It's going to be done. When it comes to a naval attrition war, it's hard to know if you're winning. Okay. Now, you get a glance, you can see that all my navy is intact, and I'm still producing, and I'm still intercepting, and I'm not had to take off my entire fleet, so that's usually good. Win. Next up, F3, or F, what is F? No, it's P, apparently. Oh, got that completely wrong. Um, and then go into lost ships, and then older. Older basically tells you almost every single loss you've ever experienced. So over time, we've lost 184 convoys, but let me read this correctly they have lost a total of 1425 i'm not sure if that's the ones that we've just sunk oh no no, no hang on so again reading this is a little bit difficult difficult 184 lost but it says sunk one one eight seven six maybe that's indicating how many i sunk and how many was lost in total for the faction i presume because you can summarize it by faction there's an african union interesting anyway it gives you a better outlook to know how you're winning final thing to do is hop onto a nation like britain and just have a local little cheeky look at their convoy counts it gives you a bit of an indication if they're winning or losing or whatnot right now their convoy counts have not shifted from what they were originally so impact probably limited now we've got the latest model we can add on self-sealing for the naval bomber and i think that's pretty much it actually low on rubber that's fine because we've got rubber in our nation so we can just extract more of it let's just fire in costa rica let's slowly move across central america and the allies start right at guatemala between mexico all right axes are creeping in from the other side now turkey's not charged the faction usually join the allies around about this time however now rommel is attacking from the other side of africa and i'm going to be attacking from the other side of the world by popping into costa rica and nicaragua is next i did think at this campaign maybe a few hours ago that things weren't looking pretty good but now things are looking hmm, pretty good really good Okay, the Americans are intercepting our convoys in this region. So what I'm going to do is mark this area as a void. But also what I'm going to have to do is build a railway directly through the center of Latin America. I, I, I got I saw a comment the other day and it was getting really annoying. He said, uh, you keep saying Central America and Latin America interchangeably. And I'm like, they probably have actual definitions, but does it really matter? Does it really matter? The comments simultaneously. Yeah, how dare you get it wrong? I'm a Wikipedia master. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Really sorry. Anyway, we've got an air force. It's a decent, decent air force too. So what we're going to do with it, which is it's here, is we're going to exercise it to level three. Standard. Oh my God, we've got a thousand of them. Ooh, we have way more planes than I actually originally expected. And then we can start being a nuisance 
around uh, the English Channel and get in control of it because usually this is an area where the Axis fail because it's kind of like almost pre-coded that the Axis lose the Battle of Britain. It is a difficult one for them to win though, but being that uh, Britain starts off with max AA and radar early on as well. Honduras, justify. Next, connect the railways. I'll be honest with you, because this expansion is themed around South America, I feel like I've been in this area of the world for so long now. I feel like I've got a little bit of South America fatigue. What happens long term here is the allies start to see that this region is a region they can't win. They can never contest. So eventually they'll do what I did here. Mark this area as a void. The reason why I mark this region as a void. Ooh, you bastard is because i saw that the convoys were getting intercepted from japan you can actually see that here it can see these x's here this means that this knit this uh sea route is getting intercepted and uh isn't working as efficiently as it normally would what i'm gonna do now is we want naval bombers over to here and see if we can hit these american submarines okay we've got rockets now that means we can replace one of these. So actually, just not one of those, just the same one with rockets. So now what we've made is kind of a fighter bomber. The game thinks this is a new kind of plane, so it just starts making brand new ones and doesn't upgrade the old ones, which I always think is kind of slightly annoying. We'll also build a max radar here as well. Honduras. And we'll do El Salvador as well, just to make a nice clean front line. You realize I'm using my paratroopers to make most of these attacks as well. Just because I can. Just because I want to. Just because I know that these nations are going to be easy ones to get through. I know deep down in my heart these ones are going to be easy ones to get through. So I felt like, you know what? I'll use those. Use my paratroopers. Take advantage of them, right? Yeah, if you press F4, where you supply map mode, you can see now they're getting intercepted. Keeps changing every now and then because they keep moving their submarines around. There's a chance because if I'm intercepting their submarines, that might affect their ability to do a convoy raid. If they've got control of islands like here, and here, and here, and here... It, it helps them move their submarines within those regions. Well, lost a submarine there. Uh, to combo raid more efficiently. So if you want to, grabbing those islands would probably uh, help your supply situation massively as well. El Salvador? Oh, El Salvador has joined the Japanese faction. That is actually insanely bad for me. Because that's blocking me. So you guys are probably confused right now. You're like, hang on, dude, that's not a big deal. What are you talking about? Well, if I attack through here now and push into here, this is going to be owned by El Salvador. And that means I can't put up my planes. So the only way I can get around this is if I power drop over the top of them to occupy Guatemala. What? Why would you do that to me? Ah. Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> Why? Okay, we'll just we'll, we'll give this one a little bit of thought and just sit on that one for a while. I realized too, my army is nowhere near big enough. I need at least two full armies now. And I'm gonna have to go service by requirement to get the manpower for that. Anyway, Air Force. I forgot about it. I'm in the Axis, right? At the same time, we can build some mighty fat airports in France. I suppose I can build up an airport. Oh man, this is, this is those one instance where I feel like I need resources badly. Oh, we can go limited exports. Oh, that sort that situation out so easily. Oh, I've got so much industry now. See, there are sweet spots sometimes. You do gain bigger bonuses the higher up you go, because those bonuses for construction, research, and factory output. However, the resources gives you a big boost to your civilian economy. So I suppose you just gotta ask yourself the question, you know, like what do you need more of that said moment? And right now we need civilian factories to build things. Anyway, send the fleet over. I call it the fleet, the air force. Is that a right terminology? I don't think it is, is it? People gaming doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh god, it's my comment section. I've become what I hate the most. Guys, I'll let you guys know that it's really nice when I see positive comments. I'm not here to kind of make a circle jerk environment. I want you guys to call me out if I say something abundantly wrong. But I feel like there's a middle ground of constructive criticism. If you say, Dave, everything you said was wrong. And I reply, I go, what's wrong? And you never reply. I'm like, well, at that point, you were just being a jerk. But then if, I, if someone says like, Dave, this X, Y could have been better if you did Z. At that point, I'm like, yeah, I think you're right, actually. I think it probably would have been easy if I did that way. Isn't hindsight a bitch, you know? It ain't hindsight a thing. You know, we're still axing, axing Ecuador, and that's a really long way away. Once again, we're getting distracted the fact we're building air bases in France. Whoa, what's happening here, D-Day? When I luckily arrived, just as the action started to kick off. Can't afford losing the axis at this point in the game, can I? Oh, I'm full air superiority. Denied. Doing an, a D-Day now after the Soviet Union's fallen is just borderline impossible. Anyway, can we start to control the English Channel? 
Yes, and they're not even contesting us. What we'd have to do at this point is use our naval bombers to start hitting in this region as well. And that's when the next Battle of Britain 2.0 starts. Battle of Britain 2. And there we go, we're striking them, but the downside is you do lose quite a lot of naval bombers when you do do this. Oh, look at that. We took out four Polish destroyers, but we lost 12 naval bombers. It is what it is. It's a, it's a hard trade. With that in mind, I'm going to have to assign more mills onto my naval bombers because I am planning to lose a few, which sucks. But it is what it is. No lie, the economy right now is uh, pretty girthy. Garrisons are taking a beating due to the lack of manpower. I'm going to put those on high priority. I have to just delete a few of these. And what was this? Oh, it was actually quite high. Okay, we're going to have to wait for our manpower to take up from mobilizing before we can start training new divisions. Because otherwise we're going to run into issues where our garrisons aren't going to be fulfilled and our resistance is going to go shoot through the roof. I can't believe this convoy situation has been going on for so long. What we're going to do now is what we call the death stack strategy. So I'm going to basically make all my subfleet into a big fat death stack. Then we put them on always engage. Then we convoy raid this region. And then we also do split off for repairs. That's important too. We don't want uh, people who need repairs to be here. And now what's going to happen is we're going to intercept actual big boy fleets, not just convoys. And then at that point, we'll be able to start to remove their screening fleet. And here we go. Here's an example of that now. So now we're actually engaging the destroyers. But as you can see here, we are actually taking losses. They have nerfed destroyers a few times from doing this strategy. But as you can see, it still works. I'm so surprised. Once again, old strategy. Used to do it a lot. Submarine only strats. However, it does seem to be a valid strategy still. It still works. You will take some losses, so just be aware of that. Keep an eye on it, because you could end up death stacking your entire submarine fleet. Remember, you've got it and always engaged. They will fight to the very last ship. And it could mean your entire fleet gets wiped, so keep an eye on them. Don't keep it and always engaged and not look at it. You need to be looking at it. And now you can see, look, the naval supremacy is going up. Our intel efficiency is going up. And the enemy naval supremacy is dropping down. A bit of a naval guide here. This wasn't meant to be a naval video, but here we go, boys. Peru to naval warfare. Whoever thought this is where this, this video is going to go. And they're also intercepting our convoys here. That's really annoying. I could convoy escort, but I don't really have the equipped tech to spot subs. So I'm worried that might just make my fleet vulnerable especially if they send a strike force out of here and I'm going to be in a bad way. Then I lose my fleet and then I have no naval protection and then I can never do a naval invasion. Okay, we've intercepted here. And once again, we're hitting screening ships because this is what we want. We want to knock out the screens as well. Whenever we knock out the screens, that means their convoys are going to be completely undefended. And eventually we'll get naval supremacy in this region just with convoys only. Sorry, submarines only. Outtake, outtake, outtake. Just with submarines only. Meanwhile, battle of the english channel and we have more control we only have 45 ships here but we're still hitting them another one another one we're doing good we're doing good i'm happy with the progress we're making so far this is looking pretty good swell okay we've got a strange convoy situation happening here i'm trying to figure out why this is happening i think the solution is to make a railway southwards to here oh i know they're not all connected okay and then we make another one to here and then we fix them up there we go and then this will make the supply easier in this region because they're having to go around the entirety of South America to get supply. And once again, if we go the land route, they're a lot safer than the sea route because we're getting intercepted. Yes. Lost uh, seven subs, five destroyers, cruisers, destroyers. Okay, the battle is changing in the English Channel now. It does look like we're getting an advantage. And they're scared to put their planes up because we'll immediately shoot them out of the sky. Keep an eye on the situation with convoys. It looks like they're taking a little bit of a hit now. It was 1,300 max. We're 1,100 now. Then Navy Intel. We can see they've got 109 destroyers. They've lost a few. Still got a decent amount though, so it's not a decisive win, but it is something. Oh, and actually, if you look at the Naval Intel, you can actually see the convoy routes that are getting intercepted. Oh, what do you know? I'm learning new things. Also, we could probably upgrade our Intel agents to get Naval Department to see a little bit more Intel on that. So we can specialize in that said region. All right, so if you run out of things to build inside of Ecuador... Hang on, there's a Galapagos as well. Yep, we build in the... Oh, it's been taken from Amer by America. Okay, okay, okay. So they've got max AA. They have max infrastructure. <laughs> they have max factories. Uh, another factory. 
And then you build a fort up inside of Ecuador. This is stupid, but whatever. Once again, we want to get the uh, autonomy down and we've still got a long way to go. Oh, man, I hate this mechanic so much. Okay, can we land lease them? So we're going to land lease you 25,000 guns. But it only reduced their autonomy by 148. Oh my God, this has been nerfed to the ground. This used to be so OP. And we'll send all the convoys as well, apart from 50. Oh. It used to be a cool strat because what happens is when you annex them, you gain it back anyway. So it's like you never lose it to begin with. You gain them the, the beautiful gift of love and they must give love in return and return that love after the relationship ends. It's like a, an engagement ring. Oh, look at the damage we're doing. Damage, 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 damage. It's the screens. Oh, 81 screens. As I said to you, we actually are destroying the British fleet now. The fleet now is getting demolished. I'm starting to think, though, the potential to invade Britain, though. I, I'm thinking to myself, how realistic is that going to be, though? And it's not very realistic, to be fair. I, I, I actually think the chance of it actually happening, happening at this point in the game is very limited. The only way you can invade at this late point in the game, sadly with nukes, because you need to be able to destroy a larger number of divisions in a very short period of time. We're taking out capital ships here. This is insane. Okay, I'm going to mark the Caribbean as a, an area to avoid. Oh, and that's fixed the supply there. Well, there you go. Once again, having a really hard time with submarines combo rating in this region. So that's the reason why we prioritizing this. Aces. It's really fun to keep looking at the summaries of these battles in the English Channel and just seeing you completely shred the British fleet. The little British patriot in me is like, Ugh, why? No. Peruvian victory or death. Update on Britain. You have 57 destroyers. Yes. And 1,000. Just over 1,000 combat. So we are slowly, slowly chipping away at them. And also, we're getting good trades on some of the Allied fleets too in this region. Once again, this strategy does work the way it did. I did remember it used to work. It has to be a death stack of submarines for it to work. Meanwhile, trade has been fixed. The way it usually works is... The AI spreads their fleet out over a wide region. So I've gone for a narrow region here, but what the AI does is something like this. They cover like a massive region like this. And what you can do then is bleed away at their submarines by attacking them in one specific region. And eventually, if you hit enough of them like we have here, eventually you've got perfect supply and it's no longer a problem anymore. I know the fix. I've realized what's the fix. We justify on Guatemala. We declare on them. They join the allies. The East Prosperity Sphere declares on them and pushes into them. They get pushed all the way back, lose all this land, and then I start to counterattack. That's the fix. Yeah, that's it. And then, that way the land will be given to me. Oh, I realize we've not got the divisions too. We need 48 of these now. We're not prepared. Oh, Carrier has arrived. And it now sits at the bottom of the English Channel. Oh, naval invasion by the Axis. Oh, ho, 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 ho. it's not going to come of anything because that's the worst place to land. But mad respect. Sea lion. Is it a sea lion? Yeah, it is. It's the sea lion, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually having to Google that now. The yeah, Operation Sea Lion was the invasion of the UK. Yeah, there we go. I, I, my part of my brain said that. Like, I don't think that's quite right. What I could do now is send over my air force. Oh, the trades. We're actually getting full on dogfighting now. and We're trading so advantageously. All right, I'm going to do this. It's probably about this situation. We've joined the Allies. Japan's going to declare war. Hopefully, Japan's going to get dumpstered. Maybe, possibly, potentially. We'll see. I'm going to build some forts up here. Level 5 will do. Can I ex Ecuador? Yes! And then we gain all the convoys back. And then we hit the button of control all Ecuadorian states. I need control of Galapagos. I cannot believe... <laughs> you bastard. Damn it! Okay, um... Yeah, we're going to have to do that. Naval invasion time. And you go here, defend that front line. And you guys go here. So I, I know this campaign was very tutorial-esque to begin with, but now I'm kind of just kind of free working with it. And I'm hoping you guys can kind of follow along at home where I'm not really explaining the mechanics as thoroughly as I once were. Look at that port now. It's a maxed out port, level 10. It's also got a level 9 coastal fort. <laughs> Man, no one is landing on top of Ecuador now. I don't think I can power drop from there to that. No, that's too far. There are a few nations of the game that can have the option to get a longer range for paratroopers. There aren't many, though. Ah, oh, they've lost North Africa. No! That sucks. I feel for them. Okay, 
Britain now has 35 destroyers. They've lost their screening fleet, meaning their uh, capital ships are incredibly vulnerable. Their efficiency to project the evil power now is unbelievably limited. Probably America, though, on the other hand, has a decent destroyer fleet. Oh, no, they're pretty low, too. 83. Oh, but they've got a load of light cruisers. So screens are light cruisers and destroyers. And it does look like they've got an OK fleet, so that's not a big deal. I'm hoping Japan loses here, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, we're going to do a naval invasion here. Will we have enough naval supremacy to do it, though? I'm not sure. We're going to find out. 13% in the Peruvian coast, which is this region. So what we're going to do is grab our massive sub fleet and go to the Peruvian coast and then project naval power there by convoy raiding. You'll find initially you won't get full naval uh, superiority. What will happen is you'll intercept their convoys, their screens will arrive, you'll hit kill the screens, you may get a few capital ships, and then once you've eliminated a few ships by destroying a few, by kicking them out of the region, you'll get naval supremacy, and then you'll be able to do your naval invasion. One thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And there we go, exactly what just happened. And off they go. Luckily it happened a lot quicker than uh, I expected. And we're unable to do this because they are unbelievably dug in. You son of a... Ah, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So to get around this, we're going to have to convoy raid this region for a long duration to stop new divisions arriving here. And also, uh, if anyone wants to leave here, they'll get intercepted as well. So we're just going to spread the boys out once again. Put them on always engage. Let's see how we go. Again, again, again. Once you do not treat, you once you do not succeed, you try and 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 you try again. Paratrooper, paratrooper. How big can we make it? Well, the game's like, let me make an unlimited paratrooper. Oh, no, okay, there we go. There was the limit. Oh no, actually, we've run out of XP. And then another one. We're going for a forty width paratrooper division. <laughs> okay. All right, we're intercepting this region and it's going really well. We're hitting loads of American and oh, all British convoys too. Okay. The Kingdom of Denmark is a cloud war in Germany. This is like the rebellion thing where they join the allies, right? Yeah. Denmark is led by the council. The council versus the Reich. Who will win? Place your bets below. We're going to go with the mass civvy strategy. It's not a strategy. I just made up as I went. I've, run, I've reached the point where I'm running on building slots. So I've got to build something. Oh, 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 oh. Looks like it's happened. Okay, yeah, these actually happened now. So we're going to make a proper front line. Go here. We deploy the extra divisions, two separate armies. Wouldn't it be funny if we had like five generals and they all had the exact same portrait? Do you know what? Just for the lols, I'm going to try and find the same general with the same portrait. Oh, it's him again. <laughs> Hang on a second. What's going on here then? Okay, yeah, we're going to train these guys though because they're not going to be ready for the front. Uh, probably going to need a max air base. To put planes up because we need full air superiority and look at the amount of divisions they've got. Ooh. 1945, we have reached the late game. Now, every YouTuber out there gets to like 1942 or EU4 where they reach the year 1500. They're like, you know what? I'm done now. I think that's the end of the video. And look at Feedback Gaming here grinding at you, giving you full games, full content, full conclusions. There's none of this. Oh, I've reached my limit, guys. I've got to tap out now. No. We're going to go all the way. And that's why you see 945 games, 950 games on my channel. Because I go the whole hog, the whole nine yards, all right? No messing around. Speaking of no messing around, look at the amount of capital ships I'm sinking in the English channel. Just insane. The British fleet is just nothing now. Oh, well, what is this? A flame tank is an option. No, we don't have tanks. Okay, we have to research that. And we're running out of things to research full stop. Denmark are just not messing about. 3,000 fighter bombers. All right, let's try the naval invasion again. Again! And we do not have enough naval supremacy. It's going to be another one of those ones where we knock out a capital ship. They have to go back repair. They send the whole fleet back. And then we get a kind of a narrow window to do a naval invasion again. Oh, it really sucks that this airbase is so far away. Yeah, you can actually see the range. It's this. Uh, even if it was right there, it still would be a little bit too far away. I don't think uh, using transport power drops for island hopping is kind of works. And you're probably thinking, why don't you just do Marines? I mean, I guess I could, but I've not really specialized in that region. What I could also do is get my big fleet and move it here. And when you have it next to the coastline, you can actually see what divisions are here. Well, kind of. I know there's a division here, but I don't really know what the division consists of. One of those. I know something. But I don't know what I know. 
Oh, okay. We're doing the, we're doing the naval invasion now. Okay. The, the big fleet was the one that pushed it over the edge. And it's only one division. Ah, oh, and he's super low strength too. Probably got got intercepted on the way in, on the way out by uh, by submarines. Nice. And boom. And yellow. And that gives us cause for all this northern bit. Oh, I feel so proud of that now. And I'll be honest with you, when it has a nice fluorescent color like this, it makes it feel like you've, you've accomplished something, you know? Anyway, besides that, we're not really going to do any more combo raiding. We're going to go back to Cape Verde. And you guys can go back to strike forcing, which projects naval power. Does this even work as well as it used to? No, it still does. Friendly naval supremacy. No, it still works. I do question sometimes if like old stuff still works. Germany would like garrison support. Are they struggling? So Intel of Germany. They have 5 million manpower and they're on all adults serve. No. <laughs> no. Oh, naval invasion. I didn't think this would work. They've not secured a port though. I'm tempted just to try and help them. Oh, I sunk a carrier. I sunk the HUD. I think their fleet is practically nothing now. So the naval invasions are going to come really frequent. They've lost another 200 convoys. They have barely any destroyers. The capital ships are just basically sitting ducks. The Italian research group for naval. Never even heard of that one before. Classic, not being able to break Denmark. This happens like so often. This is the power creep of the, uh, the Denmark expansion. I don't have access to any ports here, so I have to build the airports for the AI. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> no! Oh, I tried. I tried. Me being a good Samaritan helping the AI out, right? What's the deal then with close air support and fighter bombers that have rockets? So when you do a dive bombing routine, you have to, if you can imagine it in your brain, plane has to follow an arc where it, it gets really close to the enemy and then drops its bomb at the very last second then then kind of dives upwards and moves out the way and it gets very close to the enemy that, that becomes very vulnerable to ground fire the deal is rockets can be fired quite far away now these are dumb rockets they're not like modern day missiles they just fire off in random directions and have really bad accuracy you can kind of see them in some of the like big world war ii movies but the beauty of this is they can fire them really far away and then pull away and then the plane is not vulnerable well get this agility is the big impact on um on on having the bomb on your plane and because of that the weight of the bomb can lay you down so therefore it reduces your agility when you're on uh close air support missions but the rocket rails don't damage your agility hence the reason why they don't have to close the enemy and they don't get vulnerable so therefore uh they are more capable of defending all the fighter planes in the air when they're on close air support missions Whew. and that is why cas fighter bombers are really good late game particularly if you want to maintain air superiority but if you have full air superiority and you've already kind of won the air game you kind of want to go for air cannons which are these ones these are anti-tank cannons, which have an insane ground attack. But they're also very heavy, and they also reduce loads of agility, so you're going to bleed through those pretty quickly. There we go. We finally helped them clear up. Oh, all we had to do was build a huge amount of airports in the south of Germany, isn't it? I say that with sadness in my voice, because it kind of felt like I'm having to babysit the AI, and when you reach this point in the game, it makes me, makes me a little bit sad, I'll be fair. All right, the tank's here, so now we can make a medium chassis flamer. Medium chassis has the best stats overall. That's the reason why you go for that. At the same time, there's no reason to improve it any more than what you've already got. I think reliability can be quite important just to keep up the average reliability for the division. But overall, flame tank mediums into all ones are uh, the best you can go for. So that's the reason why we make those. There's no point getting the right amount of them in the stop part. I'm just going to add them on immediately onto the division. Uh, medium and then anti-air. Division with the same name already exists. What? And we're also going to make anti-air as well. It's a little, bit, a little bit late, but better late than never, right? Now you can see if you go resistance map mode, oh, it's still coming down. When you core a territory, uh, it doesn't show zero resistance immediately. It has to kind of work its way down again. It's just the way the game mechanics work. Actually, do you know what I think about it? Because this is a government in exile. It might not even be a zero, even though it's a core of mine. It just says it's a core territory. Oh, the resistance is coming down then. 4.2... Yeah, it is coming down. It has to go back to zero. It might just come down a lot slower due to uh, it having a high base amount of resistance. Oh, big ships, big kills, big wins. British Navy still has four carriers, though. So now the naval superiority of the Allies is practically nothing. And at this point, I'll be fair, I can start doing what I call the sweep strategy. Yeah, I'm actually going to do it in the English Channel. So the sweep strategy is where, or the embargo strategy you could call it, is where you completely encircle a country like Japan, 
or the UK and you start to eliminate any access in or out of that said nation. But I'm just going to do one little test first inside of the English channel. Just see if this is doable. We're not really hitting that much. Now, I'll do the strategy. If you split it off into two, spread them out. I'm also going to keep an eye on them and put them on aggressive and tell them to split off if they need to. And then we're going to start hitting everything. And there you go. Britain is embargoed now. And for the most part, I'm just keeping an eye on my, my boys because... Do notice sometimes you do lose quite enough of them if you get naval striked, but their Navy and Air Force spray is probably very weak now. Oh, look how many we're hitting here. Another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. If you click through these battle summaries, by the way, you can find them out, out the whole whole of the battles one by one by one. And there's all those convoys. Another one. If you hover over and you can see what the convoys consist of. They're freights, meaning they're either supply or resources. But if it says troops, they're the sweet ones because they're the ones that have actual divisions in them. Another freight one. And this is where Britain's overall convoy amounts drop significantly. So there are about 800, 900 now. Keep an eye on that because that's going to drop considerably soon. I think we're going to pull this spy out and have him in Britain. Just so we can get more intel and therefore we can know exactly accurate amounts of how many convoys they actually have. We could probably go for another spy that's a British one too. It's like one of them died. Turned off the notifications for that. That's the reason why I wasn't even aware of it. American. American German. No, there are no British ones. Okay. Go for the Bulgarian one then. Denmark. Colombia. Colombia, Britain, USA, Denmark, and Britain. I think I want to make that division bigger here. I think we're going to go heavy on the artillery and then maybe an extra few battalions of infantry. It's very artillery loaded, but it might be enough to break this front line. Might have to do power drops here. Now, I almost guarantee you I'll have to do power drops here because there's no way we're going to be able to bust this. Oh, naval invasion. Go here. And then I've also got my ultimate cast fleet. Go, go, go. Uh, split them off. So I'm pressing S to split to divide them up equally so I don't overstack an airbase. If you stack overstack an airbase, you suffer from really big penalties. And they instantly die before even anything could even happen. 26 convoys and eradicated the lots before they can run away. This has got to be hurting them long run. Yeah, there you go. We're down to 800 convoys now. We're actually getting that 100% accurate number how many convoys they have as well. 185... You see, this is the war of attrition, isn't it? You have control of the air, you have control of the seas, and eventually you can do this. Once again, keep a close eye on your, your submarines, though. Keep an eye on them. Don't make sure you end up uh, ignoring them, because you might end up losing them all in one go if there's just one big battle that you miss. I am awfully surprised by how strong convoys still are, you know? I thought they got nerfed to the ground, but evidently not. Evidently not. All right, is it time? Let's go. Do the counterattack now. The damage is decent. However, up against a lot of divisions, the South's breaking, the North's breaking. Okay, yeah, it looks good. And they're running away. What issue the Allies do run into, particularly late game, is sometimes they seem to stack a lot of poorly made divisions. Of course, the ones from Britain and America and France, they're okay. But then you've got like a lot of ones here, like all these Central American Guatemalan divisions, for instance. And they're just so poor quality. Don't, um, you don't, uh, they're not very effective in combat, put it that way. Anyway, we're going to move all our cast now. Get all the cast boys over. Realize this admiral now is a sea wolf. Uh, screen penetration, no. Reveal chance. And cooldown. And, and torpedo expert. Torpedo man. Realize these guys are twins as well. I keep forgetting about the twins. I'm going to put these guys on naval invasion support and have them around the coastline. That means they'll do shore bombardment as they naturally move. Oh, and they even split them in two accidentally. That's insane. That's really good for us to push in. And now the casts have arrived and the amount of cast damage you're going to do it is going to be absolutely eye-watering. And I'm just going to build airports on the back of it to make sure that they're always fully supplied. When you get like 5,000 casts late game, you become just unbeatable. And I've just deployed another 10, another 2,000 planes. We'll exercise them to level three because I don't want to lose them meanlessly in battle. Because remember, look, when you deploy them, their penalties are huge. So don't put them in a situation where you're going to lose them, especially if you spend a lot of time building them as well. And that's a nice encirclement. Best encirclements are the unintentional certain encirclements. So you can see here, I just selected them all and I kind of like control and right click. The reason why I did that is I don't want them to all move on this one province because they're going to have low supply and it's just going to cause a bottleneck. So I don't want that to happen. While well, Salvador's back now, because see, technically they're part of the, the Allies, the Axis, aren't they? Well, the Japanese faction anyway. Meanwhile, in Britain, how's the Navy looking? Atrocious. They have no screening ships. Uh, when it comes down to their convoys, they're still doing okay. What happens is, is Britain loses its convoys. It will deny moving convoys out. It'll mark all these areas of do not access. And then top that off as well. 
they'll get lend these convoys from the allies more than likely like australia new zealand they probably got a few oh no india's got none australia's got 100 new zealand's got three <laughs> america's got a thousand okay they're not losing any time soon anyway okay i'm gonna max out my railroads by using this button here the way it should work is it follows the railways all the way back from my capital all the way up and builds railways as it goes yeah and it is exactly doing what i'd like it to do actually so that's perfect i'm gonna go for um civilian oversight just to build compliance you do gain extra resistance from that though so be aware i don't care about britain anymore but who cares about britain though let's be real spies and one in the west coast as well i never understood why you can never play spies outside of the east coast and one in the west i never understood that i know so when they want comments are going to tell me it's victory point orientated or capital city orientated but all those myths have been debunked so i don't really know the real reason maybe i'll somehow get onto the devs one day and find out who knows maybe the answer is out there someday we'll find it from the devs who knows race for the bomb nukes a nuclear weapon oh my goodness a weapon of mass destruction guys i don't know how i feel about that death destroyer of worlds so bottlenecks are happening as we go so we need to build the, the supply along as we go it's hard because these these railways take an incredibly long time to build so just make sure when you build them just to change the priority on the on your queue finishing off this civilian factory and then we're building the railways as we go and things are going pretty swell though actually because we've still got some decent production just need to make sure we can get our cast into these regions to do enough cast damage and these planes are good to go now so we can send those off too and if they automatically go and they're all gone yes uh, be, be aware that when you assign them to a general please give them a mission i clicked on x on the keyboard to assign close air support mission and then i right click to assign them onto a general i did it specifically in that order that is so crucially important you do it in that order because otherwise you can attach it to a general without a mission and the planes will just hang around the division but do nothing it's massive and you don't want to fall into that mistake trust me i made that mistake and that's why i'm telling you about it learn from my mistakes alternatively you can just go shift control on the railways and you will automatically build them up as you go we're about to hit a massive amount of resources in a second because we're about to hit america and the the south is full of resources over here yeah look at this oh my goodness aluminium steel maxed out our air xp and there's nothing for me to spend it on we maxed out i think we've hit a bit of a, a stalemate here I think it might be due to the lack of air bases here so we have to build those up to make sure our planes can get into position also building the railways and also building up our piling bonus we'll get into position now and wiggle around and then we'll be ready to push when the air bases and the railways are built this is usually the hardest part to break and they've managed to break this really early so i feel like i just want to try and tease this part of the front line now oh i actually think it's this river it's not this river it's this one okay i misunderstood do you know what there's one way of breaking it oh but the the problem with texas is such a massive state i can't do a power drop i wish in hoi 4 it wasn't hard coded power dropping oh hang on there's an air base here okay never mind prices of erd Another thing you could do as well is go on to the continuous focus of construction engineering. I think it gives 20% airbase construction, 10%, and also 10% railway construction as well. 20% land forts, that's also pretty sweet. You know what? I've neglected my focus trait. There's a bunch of stuff I could have gone for. We've got nuclear tech. We've got ideological fanaticism, which gives attack and defense on core territory. I forgot the secret weapons. Just fall, just fell out of my head. Uh... <laughs> yeah we'll come back to that once i've done my little building adventure here all right attack go 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 and then the paratroopers they've already broke it once again new orleans is the one that's the most difficult to break for my opinion hang on i can't power drop hang on have i added something to this paratrooper that can't be power drop oh the flame tank <laughs> okay okay dave's trying to cheat the game here dave's trying to cheat and anyway, i power drop Ooh, that's really bad. If you power drop in a region, you can lose so many of the strength of your division just by doing a power drop. Oh, that really sucks. Okay, I guess the next one is going to be from here to here. Don't mess about, just do it. That's insane how strong that is. That's insane. Just can't power drop into friendly territory. Are you joking me? Is it because we don't have air superiority? No, we do. And then we're going to go for mobile. Pop. As you can see, the, the areas I'm uh, power dropping into are regions that have um 
supply depots in this case naval bases the amount of attack the special forces do is just absolutely insane remember they don't have any artillery on them this is just the raw firepower of special forces and the reason why special forces are so strong at the moment is a maxed out a mountaineers which gives special forces attack not just for mountaineers but all special forces and also maxed out uh, paratroopers too which gives extra special forces attack for everything so special forces special forces special forces you get the idea it's adding to special forces it's just a shame too i don't even have commando too because that would even give you more special forces attack more special forces special forces all right construction's done now we're gonna focus on nukes the other thing i could have done as well is i could have built a collaboration state inside of the usa i forgot about that it's a bit too little little too late now though i think it's amusing when i see paratroopers fighting on the ground i don't know why i just it feels like they're a duck out of water you know but technically, did paratroopers did fight on the ground, didn't they? After they landed in Normandy, they were fighting continuously on ground, weren't they? What am I even thinking? I don't even know World War II. What is World War II? Oh, the paratroopers are going to liberate Florida. Uh, Florida? Uh. <laughs> Once again, hop into your logistics. If you're doing a big battle plan front line, you want to keep an eye on what you're losing. Right now, as you can see, I've got a massive stockpile. I am losing a lot of equipment, but they just don't matter because... I've got a massive stockpile. It's just not a big deal. I can't believe how effective these paratroopers are. This is insane. I'm pushing into to, um, to wetlands here, to marsh here, and I'm still, like, insanely effective. When you max out special forces in Hoi Form, and nah, god damn, they do so much power. So much damage. MP. A bit late for MP now. The battle plan front is not doing too well. I suppose I could look for supply depots that are overfilled, but none of them are, because the front line's now widened. So it's not as concentrated. To be honest, you need full five armies for this usually because the front line gets so unbelievably wide. I kind of like how I'm microing with the special forces. I'm really enjoying this. Tiny little drips of dopamine. Now I can do secret weapons, which I believe secret weapons also includes nuke tech. The Peruvian Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Timeline you never thought you wanted, and here it is. I can't believe once upon a time I used to really detest special forces too. Now using them with fully upgraded, I can actually understand now why they're so good. The only reason why I dislike special forces, I didn't like the artificial cap. Um, I understand why the cap exists. I just feel like there could be a better system where it just didn't say, no, you can't make any more. It allows you to make more, but maybe the, the special forces aren't as high quality. You have to keep them within a certain threshold to make them super high quality. You know, like something like that. Okay, how are we doing? So we're not actually getting any further towards LA. Uh... They're not even halfway towards being ca capitulated. Capitulated? However, I'm getting close to Washington. Mm. I do feel like I'm losing a bit of momentum, actually. I don't feel like I'm attacking as aggressively as I once did. Maybe I should train another 48 of these and just add them to the front line to see how we go. Oh, sorry, I forgot about these upgrades as well. Torpedo attack. So these three upgrades. One, two, three. Give more torpedo damage. Oh, this one's damage. This one's hit chance. And this one is reveal chance. Oh! Okay. All right. Once again, I'm learning new things. All right. Britain, it's been a while since we visited you. How are things? So we don't have as much intel anymore because we moved the spies out. But overall, their fleet's still battered. And uh, with the below 500 combos there. So we're actually having an impact. But I think what's probably happened now is that they've marked this whole entire region as do not access. So we're not really gaining any more than we would have normally anyway. And Washington is open. So we'll take it. So how much war... Outtake, outtake, outtake. So I wonder how much capitulation it gives you for Washington. Give me like 10%. That's just nowhere near as high as I expected. But all the victory points are located around here. Like if you yoink New York as well, that's going to be pretty big. Might be a good time as well to start. No, it's no point. I was going to say, why don't I start convoy raiding America on the East Coast? But there's just no point. There's just no point. New York. 30 victory points. And... Ooh, I realize we're on service by requirement. We're going to have to do all adult serve. But once again, we've got such a big piggy bank of equipment. It's just not a big deal. We're able to do it. It doesn't make much difference. Boston. Famous for its tea pies. All right, so that's the East Coast sweeped up. And they're at 66%. You know what I'm going to do? Is these paratroopers have been pulling their weight so hard. I'm just going to shift them across the entirety of the country to the other side. And start pushing from the other side. Because I think we're going to become close, pretty close to capitulation. We take San Diego, LA, and San Francisco. I think for the front line here, I'm just going to hold position just for a little while. Build up some planning bonus. And then think about a counterattack. All right. The boys have arrived. Go here. Go here. Okay. We're behind an artillery. That's the first time I've spotted that. So we can start investing super heavy into artillery production. But now we've reached the first threshold. And that is steel. Yeah, we've run out of steel in the world. The world steel has all been consumed. 
that means our sub production's dropping to practically nothing now I think to ease the artillery situation we'll take off the support just to balance out the strength of divisions it's, nah, it's not very much difference We're a bit low on flame tanks as well Got another 2,000 fire bombers as well so i'm going to deploy those yeah we do yeah we do oh we have no manpower i wonder why i couldn't deploy them close the peninsula get a few encirclements here so it's going to be worth uh don't be aggressive actually no be calm so this is important this so when you want something done really quickly aggressive can work but be aware that if you can't break the front line you're just going to chew against the front line and it's not going to help you so aggressive is a bit of a mixed bag like, you can kind of gauge it just based on how you normally know, play your games and how you depending on how experienced you are uh balance is pretty much in the middle uh however i do prefer aggressive sometimes because sometimes balance will sit behind the front line and not necessarily attack if they don't think the quarter percent chance can win but you can win sometimes if you attack all simultaneously hence the reason why i'm a bit on the fence with that where careful on the other hand I mean they will only really attack if they have a very high certainty this is going to be a win so we're going to go for careful just to avoid burning equipment and then we'll just do a careful attack there's not really that many attacks happening because that tells me they don't really have a high favorable chance of actually thinking they can win yeah, let's just clear this little peninsula first and then we'll move on to pushing into East Coast America. All right, new tech, 225 days. That f feels like not very fast. Fair enough, and we'll also go for jet engines as well. There is a jet engine tech. Oh, it's under s secret weapons, that's fine. Okay, manpower situation is really bad and garrisons are feeling it the most. Ooh, 145,000 manpower behind. Ay, ay, ay. okay we're gonna go rid of that then we're gonna go for the resistance reduction what i'm also gonna do is go for no garrison for a brief moment and what it does is it pulls all the equipment and manpower and puts it into the divisions on the front line then we go back to local police force but then the problem now is we're now even further behind on garrison manpower by hang on garrison manpower is requiring artillery oh shit i've done that thing again where i've not change it to a horse oh let me change that over again horse 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 garrison realize we've got all these divisions in training as well forgotten about this as well so what i'm gonna do is add six extra divisions onto each one of these generals just so it brings up to the 30 cap uh the explanation for that is there is a trait you can gain that can give you access to more overall divisions and uh the less li the less likely to unlock it being that with the generals are quite seasoned but I'm still going to overstat the generals anyway, regardless. All right. I think we're going to push into here. Paratroopers are going to attempt to break into the the jungles. The jungles? Sorry, the desert here. And they're struggling. They're really struggling. Mm. Okay. This is it. San Diego. Oop. No, no. There. There. And there. No, can't break the river. Surprisingly, these divisions to the, on the Western Front are actually really meeting, really strong. But then... The ones I took on on the, the Eastern Front was just kind of like really fragile and weak. I just felt like I wasn't even fighting them. California, strong. Classic strategy I deal and do quite often for Barbarossa is to push forward and look for the supply depots and push into those points. And once again, it gives you supply and it deprives the enemy of future supply as well. So I'm just concentrating on those points to push into them. And that usually kind of changes the balance of the front line like, like for instance here look at this this crossroads here this needs to be broken because we need to grab the supply here are there any others no no there's one in denver as well here yeah it's pretty good now i feel like we've grabbed all the supply depots on the front and once again i've not got any closer to breaking this front maybe if we shift around the back here and try this again so again i'm just trying to probe the front line here to see if i can find any gaps kind of tempted oh, it's the defense that's doing it defense is super high the jet engine and we've got the latest most up-to-date fire surprisingly you need the jet engine to unlock the modern fire but you don't have to put a jet engine in it one thing i could do is go down mass mobilization at the very end because then that's going to give me the extra five percent recruitable and that could be a nice quick tech switch at the very end unconventional paratrooper here is going to have uh, artillery on it something that cannot be power dropped all right artillery well that made an impact it's so weird seeing that the model is actually an artillery piece firing as well. Three, two, one, go. Yay, finally broken through. Oh man, that just took, took way too long. All right, now the whole front line can push and no one's pushing. We'll have to put it on balance then. Balance, nobody going? Oh, come on guys. Aggressive, and there we go, now they're going. And we are 76%, so you've got to take a big chunk of America to cap them it's not just the big major cities you've got to take a big of the big chunk of uh, the midwest of one division creep up to san francisco 83 percent san francisco falls and 
83%. I must have already been taken. Ooh, what's this? Norwegian troops landing on the south coast. Do we put some air superiority on? Do we help them out? Oh, this might be the beginning of the end. This is actually it, I think. I think we just need to get some cast over here and then it's done. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring some cast over. This is like probably the only chance we're ever going to get. So I'm going to drop some cast and so they don't lose this area. Oh, they're already getting pushed back anyway. Oh, come on. Come on. Airports. All right, cast has arrived now. There are only only one port left. Oh, we lose so many to cast strikes. Come on, guys. Hold on. As I said, when you reach this point late game, there's so many divisions densely populated and stacked inside of Britain. It's really hard to break them. You have to kind of do a war of attrition by either bombing, uh, embargoing, or nuking them. It's very difficult to actually do a successful naval invasion. All right, the big push. Seattle. Is that a decent victory point? Portland? No, no, definitely not. And 91%. Oh, God, if we grab Chicago, that might be it. And Cleveland, Buffalo, Detroit. All right, we're just going to do the right click strategy here. I think the right click strategy is very strong. Chicago and oh, my goodness. Climatic. Amazing. Done. GG. Frontline. Go, go, go. You can hear it in my voice. I've got that like uber late game fatigue in my voice you can hear it can't you lads nuclear bombs have been unlocked and then we'll just build so you can only build one nuke in one region so i'm looking for all the ones with the 100 percent um infrastructure because that way i can build incredibly quickly i think two is well if you go for construction engineering you can build nukes 20 10 percent faster yep we'll do that do i have a nuke guy so that's pointless do we have an advisor that's a nuke guy there's like a there's like a, a guy that gives nuke construction speed like an infrastructure guy and he just like aa as well as a bunch of other random things but it's like surprising it gives you a 20 percent, 25 percent bonus to construction of nukes it's just really strange like a minor power guy but he has access to that awesome construction bonus and they're still holding on hold on brother we'll bring the paratroopers over oh there you go you can actually see the regions i've cored now so this is the peru bolivian uh peru bolivian um formable and then you've got the uh Grand Colombia in the north. Surprisingly, I've got decent compliance inside of Chile. I mean, look at all those divisions on London here. There's like 70 divisions on London, if not more. So they're able to do naval invasions now, but then getting a foothold is just too difficult due to, well, you either have to spam Cass or you have to nuke. Pick your poison. Ethiopia's capitulate. My contribution is 0%. I think they're the African Union. Italy has once again got a foothold on that region of the world. It does look like the Axis are back in action in Africa, too. Oh, they pushed out. My cast are doing damage now. Not a lot of damage, though. And my para boys are here. Let's see if they can make an impact. Okay, I'm a little bit scared here because I'm pinned in in this one position. Oh, never got the broken out. And I was getting deorged. If you lose org if you're in this position, you instantly just die anyway. There we go. And if you grab a few points down, spread out a little bit, the supply is going to become a bit easier. I should be able to break out now. And then all the other casts attach on to this army yeah we came back gone back in a big round circle here haven't we because at the end of the day the big winners in this game no doubt about it the big winners in this game have been the paratroopers haven't they come on they've pulled their weight so far i think the game might have glitched and convert all of these to paratroopers all of them i think with the paratrooper bonuses i've unlocked i think it's like unlocked an unlimited amount of paras well i think the breakthroughs happened the, the southern coast has been taken and I think if I push further north, I should be good. One thing you'll find is if you do small coordinated attacks, they seem to be more effective than wide ones. And I think the reason for that is the cast will all do their missions in one region and not spread out evenly. But by those things, it's like we are breaking them, finally. The question is, what is my contribution? The total for the, all the wars, well, it's not all the wars, it's just the wars versus the allies, I suppose. I lost a total of 3.47 million. I realize... Oh, I've not invented bombs. Are you joking me? You have to research bombs? We don't know what a bomb is? Okay, we'll go for uh, tech sharing. For some reason, I can't do that. It's part of a technology sharing group. I've joined that Italian thing, and now I'm cocked myself from researching bombs. I cannot believe this game. <laughs> okay. My quest for the ancient art. Oh, I've got one strategic bomber. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. That is deployed. And... Bombs away, chap! Boom! Boom! And the third one. I nuked my entire troops. Did I? Did I? Actually, maybe I did. Who knows? There you go. The nuking of London. Nothing of value was lost. 
Actually, you know, that's not true. Actually, I really like London. Uh, London is one of those places like Japan. It's like really fun to visit, you know? But I wouldn't ever want to live there. Do you get me? Do you get me? Probably not. Liverpool, the capital of Britain. Well, this is definitely the worst timeline. Boom. What I'm trying to do is reduce their war support and stability by bombing their main victory points. Uh, and when I do that, uh, it reduces the surrender limit so I can cap them a little bit quicker. Anyway, we're back to here. So 3.51 million. Uh, the biggest loser is definitely Germany, 8.66 million. And Britain has lost 6.59 million. Let's have a look at the capitulated. So America lost 8 million. Most of that was to Germany. My contribution is 31% compared to Germany's 40%. So my, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty close. Uh, Italy definitely is a, a nasty third place bronze medal. The amount of air power that we've got right now, we eventually will win. I think at this point in the game, because we have full air superiority, we would have been better off going for planes that had um, anti-tank. You've got to gauge at what point of the game you're at and how much progress you've made before which kind of plane you actually build, which feels weird to do, but Manchester, the heart of the north. Boom, leveled. It's been said a million times before, but I think nukes definitely need to be buffed. I feel like nukes at the moment are just, are just really weak. And you know what's insane? Is the only land that I have control over was from five hours ago when I occupied Chile, Bolivia, and Ecuador. That's insane. The question is now, am I be able to take the fruit of my conquests here by grabbing all of this land? Or will there be a limit of how many it could take? I have a feeling I will be able to take it because no one's going to want land in this part of the world. I mean, South America, come on. I'll take the Falcons. Why not? Yeah, I think the biggest concern with South America is a lot of the games play out very similarly. Um, and I think that's the biggest problem. It's like everyone revolved around unifying South America. And then at that point, you know, that point, where do you kind of go from there, you know? I'm not saying it's not cool to unify South America and core it all. I just feel like it's sometimes like there needs to be like different formables, maybe. maybe different objectives and like no one contested a single one of the pieces of land that i took so it does look like i can take probably the majority of this or not not all of it hawaii that's technically north america right <laughs> grabbing islands in the pacific oh my goodness japan's not going to be happy about that greenland north america right actually greenland is north america isn't it the most frustrating part of this is there's always like one like tiny little piece of land that you forget oh we have contesting we have japan one in Land and Germany and Italy. So we just contest all of that. Because our contribution is so large and we have so many points, we can bear to lose points by contesting pieces of land. The only issue is if you can two nate powers contest a piece of land back and forth over a long duration, it can result in uh, your inability to select extra bits of land. We'll grab that little island. Peru should take the islands. So who's going to be the first one to spot that I probably missed? Some piece of land somewhere, right? All right, that's it. We got everything we wanted. And the result is the Bolivar's Empire. The only bits of um, the Americas we didn't get is El Salvador, Cuba, Dominican, and Haiti. That's it. Oh, <gasps> what did I say? There's always something I forget. <laughs> There's always something I forget. It's an independent United Kingdom too. That's so dumb. AI, why? Why did you do that? I've never seen an independent Papua. Papua. Oh, look at this. A divided Australia. Ooh, very, very alt history. And surprisingly, the war of Japan and China is still ongoing and is not concluded. Wouldn't it be really mean to land lease China at this point? <laughs> hey, that's one way of getting all of Japan's land, wouldn't it? But this is it. 1949, by the way, boys. Don't ever tell me I don't go the extra mile for you guys, all right? So there's too many content creators. Shots fired, I know. They're like, get to 1941, 42, and they're like, you know what? I've had enough. I need to have a nap. Nah. Also to that. We go all the way. If you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want more of this kind of content, there is one on screen right now. Give that one a click right in the middle there. Apart from that, I hope you have an awesome day. Any comments or criticism, let me know below. Bye-bye.